Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Red Pill Tamales. I am your host, Chingo Bling. Go ahead and get you some foil off the tamales, make you a little tinfoil hat. I know a lot of y'all think that we sound crazy and this is all conspiracy QAnon shit, but we just want to open up people's eyes and make the discussion more robust. We're not trying to be cheerleaders for any particular politician, any particular uh, political party. We just want to keep it real. And give y'all some good game. We got producer Rob in the building. What's up, everyone? How was your trip, man? I'm glad you're back. I've been waiting to do this since the day you left. I know, brother. Uh, we were in Boston for 10 days. But this is episode number 14. Um, this is, uh, how do I explain it? This is the last one that's going to, they're going to get it, Yeah, that, that everyone's going to get, right. So right now, if you're subscribed on uh, iTunes or Spotify or whatever, you're only going to get this one in full. After this, it's patrons exclusive every other episode. So... Yeah. 14 for everybody, 15 for patrons. You're just going to get a snippet or a trailer of it, and so on and so forth. So every other. Right? Yeah, okay. every other. So instead of a hot dozen, you're going to get six. You're going to get half a dozen. A little half dozen. A little half dozen, a little hot half dozen if With you're not signed up. and some samples. Just snippets, you know, little teasers and stuff, unless you're signed up to the Patreon, which shout out to all our patrons. That's right. We just hit our 50th one as we're recording this episode. 50 patrons. Yes. Yeah. And then we have an independent feed. So now, as everything's been living on the What Did He Said podcast feed, Stay subscribed to it because we got other things coming on What Did He Said, but there's a Red Pill Tamales feed on iTunes and Spotify. One of those two, and then I'll probably end up putting it on Stitcher as well because I want to. Uh, we did a poll earlier. I saw that some people commented Stitcher. I'm like, okay, and then if it's worth you know putting it out somewhere else, yeah. we will. Yeah, you know, somebody so might not, come with a bag later and say, hey, can you put it on our platform like they did Rogan, and we'll pay for the it. bag, bag. We the trying to get bag. that Rogan bag. <laughs> But yeah, man, uh, episode 14, episode 15 would just be a snippet. Uh, unless you're a patron, then you get the whole in, the whole enchilada. Yep. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. Um, shit, I wouldn't mind getting a couple sponsors too, man. Keep, keep it moving. But uh, but anyway, we just got back from Boston. Uh, we just had our first workout with our trainer, Sean, this morning. It's like we're starting over. Yeah. That shit kicked our ass. I was like winded and all kinds of shit. But uh, Boston was freezing. It was a blizzard the day we landed. That evening, blizzards. I had a flashback from high school in New Jersey. I was like, yeah, snow day, no school. But it was cool, man, to take the girls out there. My mother-in-law was with us, too. Um, she's always she's woke. Uh, Marisol's mom is very woke. Yeah. She, she sends me uh, links to like YouTube and shit, <laughs> like videos in Spanish. Like, el señor Joe Biden. Uh, ahorita está acusado. Uh, you know, That's like funny. Venezuelan people going off, trying to warn people. Um does she watch this terrestrial uh, news or radio for the most part, or is she pretty like independent YouTubeish? Well, I think lately she's getting into a lot of that like YouTubeish rabbit hole type stuff. Like, yeah. you know, she's woke. She's cool. got her uh, foil on her head. But uh, yeah, Boston was cool, man. We got to see like we went to New Hampshire, went to Maine, went to Martha's Vineyard. Uh, for like we were in Martha's Vineyard for a very short time because we had to drive there. That was a long drive. Then you had to take a ferry. That was a little while. And then you get there, and it's already, it, it gets dark at 4.30 p.m. So now the sun's down. So now it's like, all right, well, look, we're here in Martha's Vineyard. It's freezing. We couldn't bring a car because there's no bridge. Yeah. We could have put the big-ass rental on the ferry, but they were taxing. Uh, so anyway, we just had dinner and, like, walked around a little bit. And it's like, all right, let's get back on the ferry because we still got to drive back to Boston. So it was a cool trip. Uh, H-E-B got their grocery stores beat. Um, Houston food has their food beat. Maybe we didn't try the right shit, but it, everything was just like a letdown after. Really? That. Yeah, yeah. Maybe went to the wrong spots. That's hilarious. I know people that are from that area, like they're about it. I mean, this is like anywhere else. Maybe in the spring. Maybe when I don't know. Cause plus, they're like an epicenter of some corona shit. So everybody, everything was locked down. Right. It's a blue state. Everything was super locked down. Like. People outside wearing masks. People driving in their car wearing masks. They stare at you if your nose is out. They'll call you out. Uh, you say Merry Christmas. They might say Merry Christmas back. God damn it, man. Yeah. So, yeah, we did. We already experienced Christmas. I've gotten to the point where I just say Happy Holidays because I'm over people looking at me stupid if I say Merry Christmas. Do they really? Do you really say? Like where? Who? It's not often, but... To even get it once gets under my skin, so I'm like, all right, you know, if, if that, if I'm just gonna sacrifice not saying Merry Christmas and just say Happy Holidays, because I, I think it's equally fun, it's equally cool and nice. Yeah, like, Happy yeah. Holidays, because you could celebrate Hanukkah and all the everything. I, I get it. it, I get it. No, I understand how it's more like inclusive, but the argument that Merry Christmas is somehow 
white supremacy. Have you heard that? I haven't heard that. I saw a tweet and it went viral. And oh, I don't, Jesus. I, it, the girl had to be hella snowflake. But <laughs> I, I, I might have it screenshotted in my phone. Your headphones I, are on, by the way. No, it's all good. Okay. I, I'm trying to... Uh, Andrew Schultz said something. He was on the thing with Rogan. I know. So he never wears headphones. He's like, yeah, he, he had a pretty interesting reason. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to just try it this sure. time. Um, but anyway, that tweet, I forget, oh, some really, really leftist Yeah, person like Merry Christmas being said, fucking. Basically, the girl said, and I'm paraphrasing, when you say Merry Christmas, not everybody celebrates. And it's just further proof that it's some white it's somehow white supremacy to to wish somebody a merry christmas because not everybody it's like i don't know it's like wait how did this become white supremacy right oh uh, yeah you know uh it's tough it's tough out there when you have that kind of mentality and you're just trying to get along with regular folk i call us regular folk i think we're regular folk we're just trying to be regular folk right and then you hear somebody that gets uh, offended by that and tweets it out and makes something try to go viral for it and like man that's a lot of effort to say don't say merry christmas anymore yeah, no, I don't no. know. I don't know. I get it, man. If you're Jewish or you just you're not you don't believe in Jesus or you're just not a Christian, like okay, I totally understand. Yeah, I think the stat was like eighty or ninety percent of Americans celebrate and say Merry Christmas for non religious purposes. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. It's they just say it, it as more of a seasonal Yeah, thing. just a celebrative, you know, celebratory kind of holiday that we've all been celebrating and it's great. It brings people together. It's all about being jovial and shit. So you've told someone Merry Christmas and what they say, how they say Happy Holidays. Yeah, yeah. Or they didn't say anything or they looked at me kind of crazy, kind of crooked, and then just kind of like ignored me. I was like, oh, that's happened twice. I was like, that's really Where weird. At? Here, around, just Sugarland, Stafford. Random just, people. Just random place. Yeah, like at a store. Like at, at work. It could just be a disgruntled worker who said, you know, oh, you know, okay. we're just a disgruntled clerk or whatever. But I guess, man, mm. if you want to be butthurt about that, that's cool, I guess. I don't know. Hey, hey somebody leave us a comment. If you're one of those people, or if you've had that experience, so we were at um, Boston's version of Central Park. It's called like Public Common Ground, some shit. But it's like beautiful. They had a lake out there. It was frozen. People made the Olaf snowman like legit. Um, folks walking around with their mask on. Of course, it was freezing. There was a Mexican dude singing like Rancheras karaoke for tips. Out of all places, Mexican dude right there, at the like the Central Park of Boston. And then across the street, we saw a Cheers, like the like the TV show, yeah, like the bar. And we're like, man, is that the real Cheers? And it's like, it's probably a restaurant. They paid the license and fee, and it's like a tourist <laughs> trap, right? Right. Sure enough, we go down there, like, oh, we'll have the clam chowder, you know, Merry Christmas. And uh, there were two other families down there. So this family, they they made a, a ruckus. <laughs> A commotion. A commotion. Because they told the waitress, they're like, hey, Merry Christmas. And she said, Merry Christmas. And he's like, oh, my God, you're the first one that <laughs> replied. He's like, we're from Georgia. And, I, and we're all, we're from Texas. And then we started chit-chatting, like, where y'all from? What part of, uh, actually, no, they're from Florida. Oh. They're like, what part of Florida? They're like, Polk County. I was like, oh, I know where that is, Winter Haven. He's like, yeah, Winter Haven. And then the other table, they're like, we're from Georgia, and we got married in Winter Haven. And, and But you could tell that they were from the South, but they really weren't down. They weren't on some, like. They weren't red pill. Gotcha. They weren't Merry Christmas. Gotcha. So we were like, we still say Merry Christmas. We we let it be known. I made sure I had my little American flag mask and everything. That's funny. Yeah. So um. So anyway, Boston was cool, but it's good to be back. Episode fourteen. Last night, uh, I hosted a comedy event, uh, Laugh Out Loud Comedy. At, they did it at Warehouse Live. Shout out to uh, Javi Luna, Jesse Saldana, Bryson Brown. Those were the comics. That uh, I was in, you know, hosting. super funny dudes. Yeah, all very, very funny. Uh, Bryson just dropped another comedy EP, another comedy album. It's like twenty minutes, all new shit, all like Corona, Corona based. I think it drops this Thursday. So anyway, I was a little rusty. I was just trying to get into the groove. It was, you know, it's a different type of venue. It wasn't a comedy club. It wasn't like what I'm used to. I'm spoiled. I want low ceilings. You know, I want this and that. But yeah. the green rooms were dope. The crowd was great. Uh. We had fun. It, it felt a little weird. It's almost like, fuck, man. Like, is this a job still? Um, can we still do this? Is this going to happen? Is this going to be a thing? Because we have tour dates for 2021. But I'm just looking at them like, man, can we just postpone all that shit? Because I just feel like I can't focus yeah. on that shit. Because it feels like you're trying to hit a moving target. You're trying to promote and spam people about an event. 
but you don't know where their psyche is, their, how afraid they are, their mindset. Is the media going to scare them that week about a spike or something? Yeah, I don't want to be a pessimist because I'm a super optimist. But when people are like, yeah, brand new year, you know, new year, new me, just kind of joking around. But also Same. like, yeah, it's going to be honestly, I think it's going to be worse. I think 2021 is going to be worse than 2020. Tell me uh, how you came out with that prediction. If election or if inauguration day goes as it goes and, you know, as most of us are to expect that Biden will be president and then we have this vaccine rolling out and then we're going to see more people will take it and more people maybe have side effects from it. We're going to have this whole, you know, are they really going to do this mandatory uh, mandatory vaccination request for, you know, maybe going to events or going out, you know, to live venues like your uh, vaccine passport. Right. You know, any, show me your paperwork. Yeah. Um, and then businesses still. I mean, the business being on lockdown in some of these states uh, is really, really, it sucks, dude. It's like, because I used to have a brick and mortar business. And if I lived in one of those states, even probably here because of the industry I was in, I probably wouldn't have made it anyway. So the fact that it was already, up, you know, wrapped up by the time this kind of pandemic came around was kind of like for the best anyway. But this yeah, is a brick lot. and mortar scary. Dude, brick and mortar scary. And then just. Again, people like starting to revolt in certain areas. Like people are not wearing the masks anymore. They're not taking the shit anymore. They're just like, look, let us fucking live our lives. And that's I don't think it's gonna wrap up in the next 10, 12 months. Like that's just me. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah. Um, I think a lot of people agree that it's not gonna just Biden isn't gonna be able to like wave a wand mm -hmm. and be like, hey, shout out to Trump. We got a vaccine now. Operation Warp Speed. You know, we can start to open up. I don't know, man. You know, you got one side of the argument. You see those people running into CVS, like, maskless. Like, it's all the fucking sham. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I did see a lady at a CVS with, I don't know if the same video, the white lady, like, a skinny white lady was like, no, there's no evidence, you know, that whatever. Hey, she could debate. They were she going, was good. Yeah. They, the other side was good, too. That was, like, a target. Yeah. And she was like, there's no proof of this and that. And the other lady's like, but, da 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 well, I saw another one where they bum rushed to CVS. They just all went in maskless. Where's the soap? Where's it? Like all obvious and I shit. I didn't see that. And then the people that are there with the mask, they busted out their phone and they're like, "You need to da 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 da." And then the the other one of the maskless lady is like, "CVS is complying with China." And da 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 da. -da. <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, people are starting to fucking lose it. Losing like, it, man." You know, some one side is like, "You're killing small business." You need to open up like you wouldn't have to do all these uh, relief bills mm -hmm. if you maybe showed a little bit more love to small business. The other side of the argument is they're doing this for our safety. The reason they're locking us down is because y'all don't listen. Y'all want to keep partying and going out without masks. And that's why it's not because our governor is fucking an idiot and he's evil. You know what I mean? So there's just. I mean, politics is dirty as it is. Yeah. But now you mixing in people's livelihood. Like, I wonder if people starting to realize how much your governor and your like Lena Hidalgo's and your county commissioner or whatever these people are. What is she a county judge or yeah. some shit? All these your mayors. Like, I wonder if folks start to realize. Hmm. I never thought that I had to factor in. Oh, is it a blue state or red state where right. I'm gonna live? I don't think people ever thought about it that much. I know I didn't. When I looked at my tour, I never looked at like, oh, wait, wait a minute, blue state <laughs> until now because it's so volatile. So now we get calls about like, hey, uh, you know, my wife, my tour manager, I'm not a Monday loan. Uh, she'll be like, hey, you know, the improv's on the West Coast call. They're trying to do Brea this day. They want to do San Jose this day, San Diego this day. And I'm just like, and she'll be like, when do you want to do it? April, February, they're, they're, they have these options. And I'm like, oh. Man, first of all, they probably hate my guts. They think mm -hmm. I'm fucking sell out coconut, want to be white Nazi, white supremacist. I was like, that's for one. For two, it's a blue state, and it's probably gonna be locked down, postponed, twenty five percent capacity, where it doesn't even make sense. You got to pay your comedians, you got to pay Facebook for your advertising, you got to do all this travel, hotel overhead for twenty five percent of the room. Where it's like. Yeah, no, nah, if I wanted to just lose money, I donated somewhere. <laughs> I donated to the Red Cross. Just kidding. Right, yeah. 
Um, you, now you have to get to the point probably where you got to look at uh, counties and not just states or cities because there's an overwhelmingly amount of red counties. So you could be in a blue state, maybe even a blue city, like metropolitan area, but there might be counties within where these clubs or venues are at where it's more red. Mm. And not to say that you'd have to worry about that. You know, it, it sucks to think that you're right. You might have to take consideration of how many people are going to come out in those areas. But uh, it's not like you're doing political work. Like you're not going out there doing political jokes, you know. That's not your whole act. No, 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 no. What I mean, what I mean is like, when like like for example, Mighty Soul says, "Hey, West Coast Improv's call. They want you to do these cities, these dates." You know, it's like, okay, well, I'm at the mercy of yeah. local compliance and rules. Totally. Is it? I don't have a crystal ball. The dates you're throwing at me, let's just go for the furthest ones out. Like, just as late as fucking possible. Dude, Rogan's talking about having October, September 2021 dates, and he's like, I'm not expecting to do those. Even October. Joe Rogan is next. like, yeah. Man, tell Mighty Soul that because, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it's one of those things where it's like, hey, just because you're annoyed doesn't mean you just fucking throw the baby out with the bathwater. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, realistically, Chingo, realistically, you're probably going to have to shoot out to Florida, you know, for one weekend out of a month. And you might take a couple weeks off and you might have, you know, you might get rusty, your comedic timing. And you might have to shoot to Kansas City and go do a little something and then come back for a few. You know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of like I rather use that energy towards uh, other projects. And because if th- th- literally how it feels, it's like you're at home. You're trying to build and create new projects. You're trying to put, you know. I got a documentary I want to do, a children's book. Um, I got a, a list over there. A comedy album from the material that I'm no longer touring with. That's just collecting dust. It's just in a vault. Yeah. We recorded in Addison. So comedy album, you know. Grab it if you want to grab If you got the list. No, no, no. Oh. I already glanced at it. Like, <laughs> I want to do more shit from home. Like, yeah. I'm not even fucking with Twitch. I'm not on Twitch. We, we've been talking about doing gaming. I still ain't had a chance to do no kind of research in terms of, well, I don't know. I'd have to ask someone like you or yeah. Frank or somebody like, okay, what console? What the fuck? This you podcast, know? for instance, this pro- this project this. came out of the pandemic. This is this is literally project number one right now. I would say. I mean, personally for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, same here. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the potential of it is is great because it's not only something that and a lot of people are like, oh, when what did they say? A lot of the comments. It's almost like seeing the coconut and the sellout thing where it's like, uh, when all else fails or when nothing else is working, resort to politics. It's like. What are you talking about, man? Aren't you generally kind of interested in this anyway? That too. That that plus it's like I just dropped an album. Have you bothered to give it a listen? I just you know? posted a voiceover last week. Yeah, Have you seen it? Or they'll be like, uh, man, stick to your comedy. And it's like, uh, we had a show last night. Did you like were you in the area? Were you down? Because you're telling me to do shit yeah. and I'm doing it and Meanwhile, we're we're growing. The podcast is growing. The shit's spreading because you're putting them short clips out there on YouTube, so people are discovering. Oh, let me go. Let me loop back around. Let's do it. Speaking of uh, people discovering the podcast, so last night we did the comedy show Warehouse Live, and after show number one, after the first show, um, I stepped out, and some people hadn't cleared out the showroom yet and they were like over by the bar and they're like, yo, let me get a picture. Da, da, da. We're chopping it up. Well, it was a dude named Octavio, his brother Gabriel, and, and then they had another brother and I forgot his name. But Octavio, he was like the most red pill. He was like, hey, fool, I know where your podcast is going, brother. This is, see, right now you following the money. You trying to investigate what's going on with this. But when you get to 9-11 and you start to look into you know this and that he's like it's another thing chingo it's it's a some weird word he's like it's the study of the energy and the humans and this and the that and the whoop de whoop and i'm like oh shit hold he's on, on bro. Eddie bravo shit yeah i'm like bro i'm still trying to figure out if i'm nationalist globalist i don't, <laughs> I don't know what populist is i'm still trying to what's the difference between liberal and progressive what's conservative i'm like hang on bro and then the other guy gabriel this shit blew my mind <clears throat> I think he's a hardcore listener. Shout right? out, yeah. If it's the game I'm thinking about, he interacts and likes, and he he loves the podcast. I think, I think they told me their uh, their screen names, but I just told him I was like, "Look, man, just leave me a comment. And say, hey, I'm Octavio. I met you at the warehouse live or cool. whatever." So Gabriel says, "Hey, man, let me tell you something." He said, "Our dads are from the same city, right?" And I'm like, "Okay, that's what's up. Where's this going?" <laughs> he says, "You dropped that album. They can't deport us all. I didn't jam it." And I was like, "Okay." 
He's like, I heard ostrich boots, but whatever. And I'm like, all right, this is, uh, where's this going? <laughs> where's this going? He's like, and then you dropped a comedy special on Netflix called They Can't Deport Us All. I ain't watch it either. And I'm like, okay, where <laughs> do you, do you want the picture or not? And he's like, <laughs> he's like, but I fuck with you now. Cause you know, he said all that, they can't deport us all shit. He said that was too anti-American for me. Oh. And I'm like, whoa, I never thought I was ostracizing people that I have so much in common with because they appreciated America more than I did at the time. Right. And not that I didn't appreciate America. It's just that, you know, without really me knowing fully all the repercussions of, okay, Chingo, let, let's, I know you're against mass deportations, right. Chingo, but can we talk about some of the pros and cons and long-term repercussions of loose borders? Like, it's just a concept, right? It's right. kind of like, they can't deport us all. Like, hey, my whole thing with that was, I didn't like how the media was scapegoating us. They're trying to blame everything on us. And it seemed like every election cycle, somebody was blaming shit on us and using fear. And we were getting the fucking bad rap. All the bad stories about illegal immigrant rapes and stabs someone. And, you know, a jogger. You know, his name was Vicente Julio, whatever, you know, whatever. That's where my heart and my mind was, you know. Now, when you look at it, it's like, oh, may I have been a pawn of a larger scheme of all these globalists who really don't care about my people, but they want to encourage this idea of loose borders and getting people like me hyped up without really thinking, well, hey, man, how many kids are getting sex trafficked because of loose borders? How mm -hmm. much fentanyl is coming in through the cartels via China and so on and so forth, where it's like... It's not so cut and dry. It's not so black and white. It's nuanced. But that shit blew my mind that this cat, Gabriel, is like, our dads are from the same spot, and I wasn't fucking with you because it was anti-American. I'm like, <gasps> mind blown. That's really interesting. And part of me was kind of like, well, couldn't you have got into my music and skits or whatever and maybe given me a pass on the whole deport yeah. slogan? And I'm like, damn, he was hardcore. He was like, and I and I asked him, I was like, so they're from, um, I think they said they're from Denver Harbor, but they live on the east side or something, San, just San Jacinto, Jacinto City. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, how did you get into like politics and all this? He's like, man, I don't know. Just our parents just never really were on some handout shit. And I don't know. I, I really, I'm really curious. Maybe he started listening to Michael Berry <laughs> yeah. talk radio or something. But it was, I, I like literally came home like, yo, the show was great. Everything was cool, but check this out. That is really interesting. And it's also the, the fact, I mean, here's, let me just put this to you. Cause when we talk about, uh, creatives or celebrities or whatever, and then we hear them talk about their political views or, or, or especially the ones that are like vote this particular, like they're telling you More what like, to do. Like George Lopez. Yeah, yeah. Like George Lopez. Um, there is a part of that, like of that whole spectrum of being a fan, having them put stuff out, wanting to consume it and supporting them, but maybe not like meshing with their political view or any kind of personal views where you have to say to yourself, can I separate the artist mm -hmm. from the art? Right. And a lot of people can't do that. Yeah. I, I'd say I, <clears throat> I'd say I could, how do I explain this? I'll put it to you like this. Like, let's just say George Lopez, for example, he could be hardcore Democrat. I still... I mean, I still appreciate what he's done. And, you know, that FTP, that shit was genius because people still use it in the comments. <laughs> yeah, they do. To this day, <laughs> FTP, fuck that puto. To this day. Yeah. I mean, you know, all, you can't take that away from him. He opened up doors for Latino entertainers, you know, just by the, not that he had to hold it open and and recruit every, hey man, come through. It just the fact that he fucking did it and he held it down and he put it out there. Regardless of, any other Latino comedians are like, nah, I don't really jive with him. He never really helped us. Whatever. Yeah. Um, I can still appreciate, you know, Edward James almost work, regardless yeah, if, sure. he, if he said, you know, don't vote for Trump. Um, but maybe as I'm getting a little bit more red pilled, and I start to, I, I start to feel that when you. You're a Edward James almost, or George Lopez, or Evan Longoria, or a Chingo Bling, and you're kind of touching on these topics. It's now it's like you kind of have a responsibility, 
in a way because not that oh you got to know what the fuck you're talking about but it's kind of like hey man did you know you do know both sides of the argument you know i know mm-hmm. how people think trump is racist or immoral mm-hmm. or or whatever but then my argument is okay well all of biden's immoral shit doesn't that cancel out and mm-hmm. now we stuck like bryson brown said he's like well these are the last two people to get picked at the pickup game you know what i mean <laughs> like, like how the fuck do we end up that dude's so funny uh yeah so that's how i look at it but um overall man it was cool to see support from like Red Pill Tamales listeners coming to the shows, meeting them in the real world, and being like, man, where's Rob? Man, where's producer Rob at? That's cool. Mm-hmm. I've been seeing the comments. Uh, They're like, why Rob ain't here? I was like, man, he ain't show up, dog. <laughs> I said I got better things to do. <laughs> no, we had to take the kiddos back, you know. Mm-hmm. That holiday break was over, so that was a whole day and a half of doing that. But uh, to go back to that real quick, because mm-hmm. I'm also in that same boat where sometimes you uh, you feel like you just can't separate the artist from the art, and I'll, I'll be the first to say, like, sometimes someone will say or do something so annoying where, like, Got to unfollow The Rock, you know, or I got to unfollow whoever the fuck. Lil Dicky. I love Lil Dicky. Can't follow you for a while just because you're, you're trying too much. You're doing too much. Being too progressive left. Being like too progressive left. Ass. And then also being too straightforward about like, this is what you have to do. If you don't do it this way, you're you're on the right or on the wrong side of history. You're a bad person. You're ignorant. Yeah. yeah. Like you're ins- actively insulting the people who are fans of you because you didn't do X, Y, Z, whatever the fuck it might be. Right. And it's like, all right. And like last night, for instance. I like Ariana Grande. Don likes Ariana Grande. We were going to watch uh, something on Netflix, and mm-hmm. we ended up watching her doc. I didn't know what it was about, but I was like, oh, let's check it out. And it's just, you know, some behind-the-scenes stuff. We started watching it. Yeah. Oh, did you? It's yeah, good. Yeah. It's good performances. She's performing and stuff. Yeah. Most of it is performances and some, like, really little behind-the-scenes stuff. But there's a there's a part in there where she gets a call or, or something, and or she FaceTimes a friend, and something about, like, oh, Biden. It was, like, a, it was in uh, subtitles or whatever. I didn't catch it, but Don did. And she was like... Oh, because she was excited that Biden did something or it might have been when Trump might have gotten impeached, you know, by the left. Uh, and she was excited and they were all like celebrating. It was like literally a five second thing. And Don was like, you can stop watching. I was like, no, I can separate the fact that that was, you know, thrown in there the same way that Taylor Swift or whoever the fuck else wants to make. Or even bit- Chingo Bling a couple years ago. Yeah, true. Yeah. You're still at the top of my Spotify list and I work Thank with you. you. <laughs> yeah. And I was over there with Beth O'Rourke talking about I'm a male feminist and shit. Who might run for governor, apparently, mm. and is going to be teaching some classes at UT in next month in january about uh election and something else mm. okay so he's yeah so where at ut yeah what you gotta have to be able to teach at ut no shit right i'm just curious no i don't know he's, well i read the thing is like now he can add one more thing to his uh titles which is professor but he's doing like it's not a class he's doing almost like what mcconaughey's doing i think it's like uh almost like a seminar series off the subjects of voting and mm-hmm. voting rights or campaigning and voting rights so yeah, Ariana Grande, for one, she's an artist. Yeah. Most artists are gonna lean left. That's just like a thing. Uh, two, the type of art she's in. You know, she a lot of them dancers. I don't want to assume if all her dancers were gay or not. But <laughs> I will some of them cats. For you. I'm not a gambling man. <laughs> some of them cat. Some of them dance moves these cats were doing. These were more of the girl side of dance moves it was it was you know what i mean you want to make some fast cash go ahead and put your money on yeah it it wasn't put your money on the show it wasn't my kind of dancing it was inappropriate (laughs) uh now that i'm 41 conservative red-blooded american yeah yeah shout out hodge twins they got the china virus they caught it they've been out for a week they haven't posted on instagram in a week and a half well they follow me on twitter so oh nice i don't know if it's a bot because i followed them and then boop boop it right back Nice. Right back at you. I might be an automatic uh, thing. It's definitely not a bot, but I don't know. Cool. No, like an automatic thing. I don't know. Yeah. No, they got they got the China virus and they've been quiet. And I hope they're all right. They said uh, they're like, man, we don't we didn't feel too bad, but after uh, like two days, like the headaches were unbearable and just ain't heard from them in a, a couple or a week. Man, they say there's a genetic component to it. Yep. And it hits certain people harder, and then obviously whatever else you got going on. But like you know, my boy Midnight, man. He's oh got, yeah, he's got diabetes right. and stuff, and so um, he had to go to the ER one night, you know. So it's it's just a mixed bag. Mm-hmm. High's gonna hit you, fevers and all kind of shit. More of a reason why it's so frustrating, and we'll get back to the warehouse mm-hmm. life because we've <laughs> we've been circling yeah, back yeah, around no, here. Yeah. Uh, we might have to do an intro at the end of this. Like guys, we were all over the place on this episode. No, but it's it's crazy how um, you know, 
you, you don't hear anybody say, hey, take some vitamin D or do. And, and this has also been beat fucking to death by people that we all that we listen to. Yeah. But there's it's not in the mainstream media. It's not you don't hear anybody talking about it on TV or even fucking day shows or whatever, where it's like, let's do these things as precautionary measures to maybe when you catch it, because you probably at this point, everyone's going to catch it. Mm-hmm. It won't be as hard on you. But no, you don't hear none of that shit. <sighs> Man. Now they got the new mutated strain and shit. And it's like, man, come on. See, that's that's the type of shit where I'm like, all right, realistically, what is this tour going to look like 2021? Yeah, let's go back to that. Because uh, our creative director, David Melgar, he came up with like, he came up with Puro Hustle Tour, Latino AF Tour, uh, Going Viral Tour. He came up with these the names. The Going Viral Tour he, that never he's happened? A, he's a ty- Exactly. He's the type of cat that like, Actually, Ariana Grande. I was gonna say he worked with somebody. Well, Ariana Grande's creative director people, they follow David. Mm. So the same font that he used for my uh, Chingo Bling logo. The one on your hat. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The same font that he designed is Ariana Grande people. They drop. They he she dropped a music video and then boom, 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 boom. Next thing you know, you're looking at the same font. Might be coincidence. Sure. But the way they work in that creative world, like they really be. They have their people that they go and copy. Scouting. Exactly. So anyway. Or it's parallel thinking, right? That too, right? Who knows? It might have just been a a font that it was its time to shine. (laughs) It was unavoidable. Yeah. Um, Damn, what the fuck was I talking about? The tour. David David Uh, and the tour. Yeah, Yeah, so David Melgar. That's why I'm here, Um, everybody. So we we had a quick little meeting yesterday. Like, hey, guys, uh, what kind of projects? You know, what do you need some branding? You trying to do some more merch drops? What's the deal? I was like, well, I don't know what this tour is going to look like next year. I was like, but I might have you do some art design branding for some other projects. But uh, I was like, tour wise, I was like, it's just it really stresses me out because it's one of those things where like I want to not have control. But it's like if I'm going to pour time and energy into some shit, I want it to be some shit that's less vulnerable to these type of variables. Yeah. And, you know, what about uh, not what about, but what do you feel about or like that Rogan and Chappelle are doing that residency in Austin at Stubbs? Like the idea of a residency maybe in Houston where some of these cats are coming here because you've you know developed some kind of residency at a warehouse live or at an or improv. The improv uh-huh. Yeah. So what do you mean some of these cats are coming here because of a people that can't you know maybe maybe people that just can't tour or aren't trying to go coast to coast maybe because you know Houston's pretty centralized Texas in general is pretty centralized. We'll come here and we'll put on shows, you know, mm. like a residency where it's Chingo Bling and whoever else, you know, mm. instead of going there, they're, they're they're coming here anyway, right? How many people can you really get that, let's say they want to go to Stubbs as well, just because Rogan and Chappelle keep, you know, doing shows there. That place is probably booked for shows for them because they're doing a residency there. How many other places around there are also doing shows? Probably not a whole bunch, but yeah. some. So um, the folks over at, uh, I think the Addison Improv, they had mentioned, I don't know if we were at Arlington. No, we were at Addison. They mentioned some type of residency, uh, but that was that was like earlier in the in the year in the pandemic. That's not a bad idea to basically say, "Hey, we're not going to be probably going everywhere, but you can catch me at the Houston Improv." You know, all these dates. Yeah, all these dates with all these different comics you've either toured with or that are planning or wanting to come to Texas anyway. Be a cool little way to collab or do some. Yeah, something to think about. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully people didn't all write me off due to politics. Absolutely not. I think, as a matter of fact, just by seeing the, uh, the you know, the vote up, not vote up, but uh, the like rates, ratios, likes to dislikes on YouTube, the comments on the gram or even Facebook, which Facebook t- in my head, I don't know how you felt about it. I was like, that's going to be one of the biggest tests of how murky this water is. Uh, and dude, it's fucking overwhelmingly positive. I know for your mental state, you stay out of it, which is pretty good yeah. for the most part, but it's really overwhelmingly supportive. Mm-hmm. I think one thing I definitely want to work on besides wrapping my brain around like the world, what the fuck? Why is there so much pork in these bills? Like, yeah. why is all that? That's a new term, right? To me, like pork in the bills, like it's a great term. Why is all this money? If it's if it's called a covid relief bill, what's this omnibus thing that's attached to it? Is that what it's called? Omnibus? Well, I know that uh, Crenshaw was talking about how they usually they do the foreign aid bill. 
separately, but it just so happened that they voted on the stimulus bill and the foreign aid bill. So this budget, this foreign aid budget had already been discussed and agreed upon earlier in but this year. But they put it together. But they put to it all together. It, to and make now, it 5,000 pages? To, be, to make it 5,000 pages, and now everybody's kind of conflating it as it was all one and the same, which it wasn't. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you can still dissect why this, now that people, instead of focusing on the relief bill, they're like, okay, well, if it is the foreign aid bill, why is there so much foreign aid going out, right? Like one of the things I'd read is the United States will unknowingly or stupidly borrow money from China and in that bill give it back to China. So they're getting money from China, paying it interest and giving it back to China. Like what kind of what kind of what, what, where's the foresight there? Who you know? put who agree? Like hey, who did that's that a deal? great question, Mr. Bling. We should figure it out because I don't think anybody knows. Like how, how does that happen? China slick, bro. And like that dude Eric Swalwell, mm -hmm. he was the main one that was talking about Russia collusion, Russia collusion, Russia, Russia, Russia collusion, Russia collusion, P tapes, Russia collusion, impeach, impeach. Turns out he was the one with Fang Fang, yeah. Chinese spy. Yeah. But yet he's still on all these important committees getting all this good info. Yeah. This shit is juicy as fuck, man. I can't get enough of it. And it's just, it's interesting to have, you know, these conversations with you and then seeing how many people are also into it. Like they... They want to get to the bottom of some of this stuff. They want to put more of these topics out there for you to discuss. And it's a never-ending cir circle and cycle. But I think the bonus to a lot of this is that going forward, people are going to be more aware that, hey, these people suck. Let's not vote for them anymore. Now you're gonna now I know people are going to be more focused on the midterm elections. Like, okay, what, who are these congressmen and women we need to boot out? Who are these senators that we need to get the fuck out of there? Well, I wonder if Californians are happy with, what's his name, Newsom. And are they going to keep voting for people like that? You know what I mean? Because hypocritical, just going crazy with the lockdowns. And I feel like even people I know, they semi brainwashed because they're like, yeah, dude, you know, it's locked down, but it's for our own good. Or like, yeah, it, it kind of sucks and we can't work, but it's because people don't wear their mask and we kind of got to do it. And it's like, OK, well, meanwhile, I'm free as fuck over here in yeah. Texas, red state balling. They become the epicenter. But they become like the place with the most cases, the most infections, the highest rate of uh everything and they're the most locked down I, I still don't get it it doesn't add up no it doesn't uh boston i think is number two really um like lockdown most numbers and all type of shit can we just start at the surface level of why that is and how that doesn't make sense to continue it you know one of, one of my big questions is when you see the pattern of red states tend to be more open and economically uh i, I guess it seems like they're worrying about the economy and they're trying to let people work and it, it looks insensitive to a lot of blue state people. It's like, that's why y'all have so many cases. And meanwhile, Texas doesn't care about grandma. And look at Florida killing grandma, stuff like that, right? I wonder if these blue state politicians or uh, basically Democratic governors and mayors, do they put together their game plan, their lockdown uh, protocol, do they put it together independently on their own or do they just kind of copy what New York is doing? What Cal Do they just say, this is how the party does it and we're going to do it like that? For example, Lena Hidalgo, they give her a hard time because they call her comandante. Like she, where'd she come from and why is she always miss lockdown? Like she's abusing her power. Next thing you know, she's just trying to see what all can a county judge do so she can make us do it like curfews. That's one of the things she has control over. And you know, I, I mentioned before she zoomed in to the DNC, the Democratic thing. And they're like, and now to Houston with Lena Hidalgo. Hi. <laughs> da, da, da. Oh, my God. Curfew. Lockdown. Yeah. We're doing our best. And it's like, so how much data and science is it? Or are you just saying this is how the party does it and we need to do what these other people are doing and that's how we're going to do it? <laughs> You know what I'm... Does that make sense? Am I explaining it? <laughs> no, you're explaining it right, yeah. but no, it doesn't make sense. That's why it's so funny. It's like, in my soul sent me something the other day or yesterday where it's, she goes, I think I'm just... In, I'm accepting the fact we're in the simulation or something is just... Some fuckery is afoot, basically, was what I trans... Uh, what I kind of got from it. And uh, I have to agree, man. Like, this seems more and more like super simulation movie type shit. And I think it's only going to get worse. Well, here's one thing to consider. <clears throat> Humans... We don't really operate off logic and facts. That's an illusion. The way humans operate is we all have biases. We all have these little inclinations. Um, we, we don't work rationally. A lot of shit that we do is just from habit, 
autopilot or we'll rationalize the shit. Like we'll be like, I deserve, like say you're not supposed to be drinking alcohol or something. It's like, well, I've earned it. I had a stressful day. You're going to find a way to tell yourself, ah, well, you know, tequila is good for digestion and my blood pressure is probably high. So it'll help me sleep better. Yeah. Or whatever. And it's like, okay, you were just going to do whatever the fuck you wanted to do anyway. Do you really need those bullshit made up by uh, reasons you just gave <clears throat> yourself permission? Yeah. So I feel like that's a big factor because you might tell a Biden supporter, like, hey, dude, what if I told you that there's more proof of Biden being the actual racist? They're just like, no, because their bias won't allow them to see it. Mm-hmm. And the the whole thing about fuckery and the simulation, it's like the news, they know how to persuade. You know what I'm saying? Like they know what words to use. They know how to make the headline. And it could be it could be one topic. But two people, you know, they interpret it totally different ways. So so basically what I'm saying is like it's an illusion that. Everyone who is anti-mask or is pro-mask or pro-lockdown, that they're just, they did their due diligence and they Googled it and they read and they read the article and they've come to the realization that economy is more important or masks don't work or they do work. It's like, dude, we're all, we don't, first of all, you have the fog of war. Like when shit's hitting the fan. We don't know if Fauci and them are lying to us on purpose because they just want to save the PPE. We don't know if Trump really fell asleep at the wheel because CNN said and and supposedly Biden and them were ready. But maybe it's just fake news because swine flu was during their thing. But we just didn't hear about it as much. And they didn't make as big of a deal. We didn't shut down for the swine flu. And well, maybe there's a reason for that. And it's like from the whole beginning, people have been so fucking confused, especially now with the way they uh, painted Trump. Like, for example, if uh, a few years ago I had said, like, you know, everybody, I voted for Mitt Romney. They'd have been like, oh, that's odd. Anyway, <laughs> like, well, why'd you do that? It wouldn't be like, you fucking wannabe white coconut self-hater, racist Hitler, wannabe gringo bling, canceled. It's like, yeah, yeah. It, no, this is a very different time. And it wouldn't even be as big of a deal. It wouldn't be like, hey, Chingo, so what's all this political stuff? It's just, I don't know. That's hilarious, dude. You're right. Um, It's going to be weird. So we've covered a lot of stuff. And I know there's other things to get to also. But do you think he runs, if if he doesn't on the 6th, when he's, you know, planning like, I don't know if you saw the tweet, it's like January 6th, you know, be there, you know, it's going to be huge or whatever. Meaning people are going to go to D.C. Yeah, they're going to yeah, like they're they're going to rally and then basically, I guess I don't know, maybe as an intimidation tactic, depends to like side with Trump and you know make sure that these are contested and like let's not certify Biden on the sixth, mm-hmm. right? Or let's just say they does. Does he run again in twenty twenty four? Well, a lot of I mean, a lot of people think that that he can and he will, and they also say that um, he might just set up a media company. In, in these four years, if you, you know, if you don't win. Mm. Um, but while we're on a subject, you know how all this evidence, right? Like, oh my God, they're the Dominion software or like there's a van full of ballots that just appeared out of nowhere or, oh, they're using people's stuff because people are trying to go vote. But by the time they show up, it they got another thing at home saying, hey, here's your requested mail-in. You know, like all this weird sketchy shit right mm-hmm. that the Kraken and Sidney Powell are, are trying to present and you have all these Rudy Giuliani with his little his little Beijing dripping down the side of his face yeah um well obviously people on the left or the Democrats they're like smart people smart people that quote unquote do their research will literally tell you to your face that's why it all got um that's why the court and the judges already saw the evidence and there was no there was no cheating because they all, it, it, you know, you had all these little committees and hearings and the judges and the lawyers and the Kraken and Rudy Giuliani and, and, and nothing. It's like, okay, really what happens is they don't really look at it. It just gets thrown out of court because of technicalities. Yeah. So they haven't, it's not like the judges 
are actually going through like oh okay we have 50,000 okay how many so all these votes came in overnight hmm is that how it works or what's the suitcase with the ballots is that real or um or like the lady that was testifying I put my name on the paper and if I'm lying I go to jail oh, did right. you did you did you uh she reminds me of the lady from Ozark uh, Ruth Ruth oh yeah Ruth needs to play her she's a great character but um it's almost like no that's what it seems like but what what's happening is for different technicalities, it just gets thrown out. Yeah. Like either the Sup- Supreme Court says, hey, Texas, sorry, I'm not going to get in between uh, you suing Pennsylvania. Yeah. Or, or stuff like that. It's not, yeah, we went through it and, you know, it, it looks legit or no. I don't think, when's the last time, I mean, there's been contested elections and, and like this whole idea of like so-and-so didn't win, X, you know, XYZ didn't win the election has been going on forever, like going way back to the 50s, 60s, 70s. And even as of late, I don't. I think it's every election has been contested. Or there's been like, uh, you know, foul play, or whatever, since was Bush Gore, Bush yeah. v. Gore, uh, Obama and the birther thing, you know, wasn't, you know, born here or whatever, the birth certificate, uh, Hillary and Trump, and then now you got Biden and Trump again. It's just like people are never going to be, I mean, they're never happy, but there's one side that's always upset. Well, because apparently it's an illusion that we have fair elections. Yeah. Especially now, what I'm hearing about, like, how many, many, like, how many millions, I think it was like 400 million that Mark Zuckerberg himself invested into, I think, the Georgia race or the Democratic Party or, like, some crazy globalist shit where he's like, look, man, I'm trying to get into China. Yeah. I, I need that market. That's a billion. They, they don't have Facebook in China, and this might be the way. You know, same way Disney said they let us put uh, a theme park in their country. They were nice enough. And in conjunction with their government, uh, they now have a lot of say over their films. And and now the, the head of Disney is going to be Biden's ambassador to China. You know what I'm saying? Really? Something like that. Damn. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if ambassador is the right word, but some type of position. Czar. Exactly. So here's the thing. You know how I got to give credit to Scott Adams because I, I think he's the one that said this. You know how when you're talking to, a, let's just say, Biden supporter, Democrat, and and you say, um, well, you know, there's all this weird stuff going on with the elections and the dominion and the software and the, the solar winds. And, you know, I don't know. It's kind of sketchy. Like all of a sudden. How did y'all say that Russians were interfering with our elections in 2016? And all of a sudden, these are the cleanest, clearest, best election, perfect elections ever. And you know how you usually just get shut down and like there's nowhere to go with that argument because they're just like, yeah, whatever, take your L. Mm-hmm. Whatever, take your L, QAnon, 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 conspiracy, conspiracy, uh, yada, yada, Biden won, Biden won, blah, 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 blah. doing it here, doing it here, getting my football, I'm going home. Yeah. A way to reframe it is the Republicans are being told that their concerns over the election don't matter. So your concern over the legitimacy of the American election process, that doesn't matter. That's a different way to frame it. Like, no, 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 no. You apparently have concerns over how the elections work. That does not matter. That's what they're being told. Like, Nothing to see here. It doesn't matter. There was no laptop. There were no Hillary emails. You know what I mean? Like Biden is not pro-China. We just got to, they're, they're, they're an ally and they're friends. And don't worry about what they're doing to the Uyghurs in, in them camps over there. And they got like slave labor and don't worry about all that. Yeah. That's not the threat. Orange man bad. Take your L. Uh, I have a guest lined up. One of a few, but one in particular that is uh, an expert at, breaking down congress basically okay and she's more pro not pro she's very into how does government work Mm. not red blue right left it's how does the government work because it's one thing to play politics Mm -hmm. and understand that and it's the other to understand how the government works Mm -hmm. and she does and i actually sent you that the podcast and i don't i don't want to shout it out until she comes on and, and talks about it but it's really interesting man and it's like it's a doozy like it's a head spinner to understand or to even hear about some of these I mean, as I follow, I've followed her for years and we've known each other for a long time, I've, I hear terms and organizations and groups of people that have been in power for a long time that, you know, maybe you can call, you can call these people the people that pull the strings even because it's, and even some of the most cynical personalities will say, 
if if you actually had a say so in how elections were ran, ran or it had a say so in important things, they wouldn't let you do it. They're so cynical. They'll say that you your vote really doesn't count yeah, in the yeah. sense that they're going to mm-hmm. decide who's going to be in power anyway. <clears throat> they may be right. I think Trump was one of the first in a long time, if not ever, where it really broke, it shattered that that belief because he broke the system in a sense by getting in. Yeah, and you're right. It's like he was the catalyst that like called out the media, called out fucking lazy, crooked politicians. He was the one talking on both about, sides. Yeah, exactly. He was the one talking about drain a swamp. Uh, he really disrupted. He shook the box, and it's like he changed politics more than politics changed him, and the perception of it by the general public. Now the genie's out. You know, it, it's been out for four years. They tried so hard and are about to succeed to get that genie back into the box, and the odds of it coming back out might be another hundred years. Yeah, you know, yeah. no, exactly. And anytime I give him credit by saying his skill set was the perfect skill set for what we needed um at this time you see what i'm saying it's like there's no perfect president there's just different presidents with different skill sets that come in handy in different times for sure and what you just said hit it on the nail which is he fucking shook the box he called motherfuckers out he disrupted some stuff and the republican party has never in my opinion been that interesting or or um i guess I don't want to say like rebellious, revolutionary, nothing like that, but really fired people up. Yeah. Like I guess being a populist and and a nationalist, I guess like America first, and we're bringing back jobs here, mm-hmm. and we can't have a whole bunch of motherfuckers coming in into the house, and we don't know what their intentions are or where they came from or what they're about. Like common sense shit that people weren't really allowed to absorb it in the in the middle of all this fake news and all these hoaxes and he really called out the um the uh the media like a motherfucker so venezuelan uber ah yes i want to talk about that because the way you just explained it's not about playing politics it's about how does the machine works um meaning arguably your vote didn't matter for many ways and many reasons uh, for example, you know, if you live in a blue state, it's probably going to stay blue anyway. So, yeah, your shit probably didn't matter. Right. <laughs> and even though Trump arguably won by a landslide, you know, in, in all legitimacy. Yeah. Mark Zuckerberg and big tech and the media, they all kind of got together however they did it. And I'm not saying they conspired, but they set it up to where. People didn't even have a fighting chance to even know what the fuck, you know, especially with the, they use the pandemic as, as an excuse to mail in your ballot. And we're using this bullshit software that we're not allowed to look at the code. And the minute you question anything, they call you fucking QAnon conspiracy weirdo. Um, so th- when we got picked up from Hobby Airport, when we landed from Boston, it was a Venezuelan Uber. And my wife knew. That I wanted to talk politics with this dude because he's from Venezuela. Uh, you know, my, my dad remarried a lady from Venezuela and, you know, she was escaping that bullshit. So anybody from Venezuela, like my heart goes out because you hear these stories of the communism. You hear about like there's nothing on the shelves. It's like typical communism. It's Cuba all over again. It's like fucking Russia back in the day and so on. So somehow Marisol found a way to be like, so... Do you have family in Venezuela still? And boom, that just opened it up. Nice. And we just he just started talking about like he said, look, study Venezuela from 1998 to now. And he's like, he said it, they used socialism as the the cover, but it was really communism. So he said it was communism with in disguise as socialism. And he just told he broke down the playbook, how they amended their constitution how he says he says when you study this stuff and you talk to people he's like you're gonna have some people that are far one way and far the other he's like the truth is probably gonna be somewhere in the middle he said for example a lot of these bad guys they did some good shit too and that's how they were able to get you know people on their side and for them to kind of continue to do what they do for example old people you know elderly people in venezuela at one point there was no social security. There was no retirement type of help. 
And one of those bad guys, I forget if it was Maduro or Chavez, because Chavez was in first and Maduro was in now. Actually, they have two guys right now that both, one's elect. Ah. One's is like, no, I won. The other one's like, no, I won. Mm. It's like, but you cheated. It's like, mm, Prove I it. won. <laughs> exactly, right? And he was talking about this stuff, and I'm fascinated by it because, you know, some people argue like, you know, hell, in America, we have all kinds of socialism. It's all over the place. And the, and you see it in the comments like, settle down, Chingo, hating on socialism. You know, our post office or like free lunch. They start, na- you know, the fire department. They start naming the typical excuses as to like, socialism is great and you need some of it. For example, right now, COVID relief. That's socialism. You're giving out money and arguably it's probably by design, like lock people down, starve them out. A broke or a broke citizen is an obedient citizen and and they're using this crisis to crank up a little bit more socialism let's get a little bit more socialism happening so anyway venezuelan uber driver he's just explaining he's like look man you're gonna get stories from this side and this side he said what i'm most concerned about is mexico and their guy their president amlo and i was like oh really and here comes marisol's mom angeles and she's like, mm, pero, because she's from the F, and uh, she hears good things about AMLO. She's like, you know, but he, you know, he got rid of the uh, the the Air Force One from Mexico. He he uh, auctioned it off, and you know, he's a man of the people, and he takes commercial flights and this, that, and the third, right? He's like, that's the same thing uh, Maduro did, or was it Chavez? One of them. He's like, yeah. He's like, that's playbook. He's like, and he's very friendly with the Cubans. Talking about AMLO. And he says, so he's, Amlo's basically kind of left, leftist, but a lot of people in Mexico love him because of the shit he's doing. Mexico's been so abused by their politicians because anytime you're rich in resor- natural resources, you're going to get corruption. They're pimping out your country. You know, they're like selling oil. They're privatizing shit. There's only one Pemex. There's only one light company. People can't afford to fucking, it's like, okay, am I going to have gas Try to take a hot shower in the winter or what the fuck? Yeah. Because they don't get paid as much. Shit's expensive. It's all fucked up. So the stuff that AMLO was doing, the people were hungry for it. They're hungry for like, we're tired of corruption. We're tired of waste of these uh, fucking swamp politicians. I'm auctioning off Air Force One of Mexico. And everyone's like, yeah, fuck these politicians. Finally, a dude that's looking out for us. And... But the Venezuelan Uber driver's like, yeah, that's all playbook. He's like, who wants to amend the consti- their constitution? And Angeles Marisol's mom is like, AMLO does, but it's to be able to expose these corrupt politicians. And, you know, there's a reason for it. And he's like, really? Is there? And, and he's like, Chavez did the same thing. Maduro or Chavez, I don't know because I'm new to the Venezuelan politics scene. <laughs> But it's fascinating because this yeah. dude, he told me, he's like, uh, he said, back home, he's like, here, I'm an Uber driver. He's like, back home, I'm like high up fire department, firemen over, you know, a bunch of, well, I don't know what the term Crew. is. Yeah. Regional district manager, fire department. He's like, you know how much my salary is right now for what I do over there? He's like, $2. He's like, it's two bucks. I thought it was two bucks a day, two bucks a week. Damn. I didn't ask. I was just blown away by the two bucks. And, you know, he's. Whatever money and shit he hustles here, he's sending money back home. He's taking care of his responsibilities. And my heart goes out, man, to countries. And I want to look into Zimbabwe, like how that cat used socialism. And then they start to regulate prices of stuff. So that lady, Melissa Tate, she was on Candace Owens. She left Zimbabwe. And she was saying how, y'all should go listen to that. She was saying how when they started to try to regulate the price of stuff in the middle of their socialism reboot they were saying like okay if you sell chickens uh you got to sell them hoes for five and then they're like uh it costs it cost me six to raise them and i'm not gonna make profit and so now now basically you're having to have a black market connect for mm. food so now you got a chicken man and call call the beef man and and you're having to work outside of that system and Hopefully they don't try that shit here where they start to kind of like, no, 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 you got to charge this for that. Yeah, it's and that's what a lot of people, I think, are voicing their concern of. It's like it seems like the foundation's kind of cracking and mm-hmm. people are letting some things slip through. And before you know it, the, 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 the sole 
paper document, whatever, the, the constitution of this country that has held up for as long as it has, has to continue to hold up or this country is no longer the superpower that it is. I know that makes a lot of people happy, maybe not from some from America, but mostly not from America, obviously. But at the end of the day, we probably won't see it in our lifetime, but it makes for what seems like a dark future if that constitution does ever crumble. Well, um, one thing that Scott Adams has been talking about a lot lately is how it's an illusion that we have this, uh, what is it, Democratic Republic, or what's the word? Uh, so, uh, social, uh, Democrat, Democratic Socialist? No, or no, no, the cons- uh, cons- uh, Constitutional Republic. Constitutional Republic, yeah. is that what it is? Mm-hmm. That's, what, that's what the United States is considered, a cons- Constitutional Republic. Constitutional Republic. Well, he basically says it's an illusion. Like, we no longer live in a republic. Like, this isn't democracy. He's like, we're a few layers removed. And he explains it. He breaks it down. Saying like, okay, this fucking 5,000 page thing that Congress had to vote on, they didn't read it. He's like, first of all, we don't even know if those people really even got elected. Somehow those are the Congress people. We don't know what fucking voting system was used or what kind of crooked shit they do in their state. But these are the Congress people. And they just signed some shit they didn't even fucking read. And there's all kinds of stuff in there. You know, so it's kind of like we're living in some shit. Where shit's all fucked up. It's all an illusion. Like, for example, um, did your vote matter? You know, uh, how much influence did big tech have? You know, censoring and fact checking. And and then you factor in the media and and then the algorithm and all this shit. And we have a big bowl of fucking doo-doo soup. (laughs) Doo-doo soup. (laughs) We swimming in a big bowl of doo-doo soup. Uh, I don't even know it. I wanted to pull up. Um, I don't know if you saw it. I think he tweeted it out. Uh, Rand Paul. Rand Paul is one of these characters where, like, he he still seems like he's one of those few left that like you could really get behind. He didn't vote on that. He voted no, right? I'm pretty sure he voted no. He, and then he also uh, made a report of all the things, all the wasteful spending. Basically, did you see that by mm-hmm. chance? The internet's really slow. Sorry, guys. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. It help us get better wire to, to to hardwire that bitch back here so that we can do. Uh, Unless we convert the front house into uh, podcast. Podcast HQ. Yes. In which case, still. But anyway, cameras. stand by. Patreon.com. <laughs> stand by. Um, I got to find it. I got to find it. it. It was basically a list of all the things that he had uncovered. And actually, that's now that I remember, I was reading some of it earlier. And that's how I found out that you know the U.S. will borrow money from China with interest, give it back to China, that kind of thing. But he was talking about like the wasteful spending of uh, like speedboats to like Zimbabwe or someplace like that. Uh, you know the the gender studies to Pakistan or um, grants for for somebody to come up with smart toilets, like shit like that. That was in this this foreign aid mm-hmm. slash COVID bill or whatever. So, okay, so the, all the random shit. Yeah, just all the random spending, wasteful spending <laughs> that he called it. So, so that's the pork in the bill. Now that's a shirt right there. What's all this pork in the bill? Something. There's got to be something tamale related. About For the sure. Pork. So check this out. Maybe because I was high the other day, but I was watching the YouTube and looking at this omnibus relief thing, right? And I start thinking to myself, all this money that's going out, you know what I'm saying, to other countries, is that an example of corporateocracy? And from what I read in the uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, which is basically this, um, what America would do is they'll go to some little country like in Central America or somewhere, pick a small third world country, and they'll say, hey, you know, all your rural area, your countryside, man, they don't have electricity. We can come in, put a power plant, wire this bitch up, and y'all going to be set. And we know you can't afford it, so we're going to go back to the U.S. and they got the World Bank thing. We're going to get all this money printed and that's how we're going to be able to uh, pay, you know, American engineers, consulting firms, construction firms, safety managers, like all these people that are going to go in and get this project done for your country. All you got to do is when it's up and running, you pay us back with interest, right? So what happens is the country can never fucking foot the bill. We end up owning their asses. Now it's like, well, well, I guess we got to put a military base here or like, you know what I mean? And what ends up happening with some of these projects is the country ends up worse off. Uh, A lot of the, I guess, poor people in that country can't even take advantage of whatever facility or thing. Like, we built a dam or whatever. Like, it doesn't even benefit the rural people. If anything, it just disrupts their nature and throws off, you know, the environment or whatever. So I wonder if all some of that money that's going to these countries 
if it's that. So it might say, uh, you know, 100 million to Zimbabwe for some shit. And it's really like, well, that's how we're going to be able to fucking own some shit and be able to tap into their, let's just say, their oil. Right. Because they're not going to be able to pay back this loan. And now we, we own in some shit. Another way I heard it, it explained about all that pork in the bill is let's say you're going to give millions to uh, Pakistan for gender studies, right? Maybe, uh, who comes up with these things? Senators? What things? Like this, like, who, who's the person that says, hey, uh, there needs to be a few pages in that 5,000 because there's uh, gender studies and we need to send a couple million to Pakistan. That's a good That's a good question. I would say it has to come from both sides. Like somebody has to vote on what's going in there. It's got, it has to be mutual, right? It has to be, they have to com, come to common grounds. I don't know how they came exactly up how they come up with shit like that. So, so for instance, um, the theory is basically like it's a way to bribe and money launder basically to bribe somebody in Pakistan. Let's say, let's say there's a war general in Pakistan and we're trying to put money in his pocket before China does. It's on, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's like, all right, they said if we run it through this museum thing that we, you know what I mean? Like you'll see something random in the bill that's like gender studies. Mm-hmm. We don't know. That's the thing. We don't know. We don't know if it's like, all right, look, Americans, I know y'all are all fucking passing around this meme <laughs> talking about gender studies in Pakistan. This is what it really is. China's ready to post up and own their ass and, and have some leverage over there. But we're going to do it first. And we got to send them the money through the gender studies, and that's how they're going to be able to get it. But we don't know. We don't know. It's like, please justify it. So look this up, everyone. It's called the uh, the Festivus Report. This is what the report that Rand Paul put out. And it's funny because uh, the quote is, so Seinfeld fans know the faux holiday Festivus. I don't know if you're a Seinfeld fan. Festivus. Festivus is a, is a faux holiday that George's dad comes up with. Uh, Festivus is a time for the airing of grievances. And this is, this is like the Festivus holiday is like a steel pole. It's like a whole backstory, right, with George's dad. Uh, will this year Senator Rand Paul's grievances amount to $54 billion? And he makes it, he made this report. It's called the Festivus Report. And <sighs> it's, it amounts to $54 billion. With and B. With B, with, with spending. So what does $54 billion mean to you? Uh, if the waste I found is, blah, 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 the average taxpayer pays out 10000 So it's like every taxpayer paying $10,000 to allow this kind of wasteful spending to go down. <laughs> And it's a it's a pretty large report, and I just kind of wanted to get to the part where there's a list of these things, the waste of 2020. I mean, you got healthcare, you got foreign aid, some of the things like send uh, sends Russians to American community colleges for a gap year, uh, set up book clubs for Pakistan and Afghani kids. That's some of the foreign. I aid heard about stuff. like a border for Jordan. A border for Jordan. Uh, spent billionaire spent billions in Afghanistan on counter counter efforts? I don't even know what that is. So they won't fund the U.S. border. Like, for example, how much bullshit is coming through that Canadian border? Hmm. For example, let's talk about that. And the reason I want to talk about that is because if I brought up the Mexico border, I get called a fucking sellout, right? So let's talk about that, Can- <laughs> that U.S.-Canada border <laughs> because I'm not Canadian and you can't call me no sellout. But don't you know that you could pay a coyote in one of these, let's just say you're from Honduras or something, and you could pay a coyote. If you got that, that's like A1. That's that's like you you fly in first class. Well, they'll fly you to Canada, and then you just walk across. That's for real? That's the thing. It, it's probably not that common because that's a more expensive way of, of doing it. Yeah, tr- smuggling somebody. And it's probably, I don't know if it's less risky, but it doesn't sound as bad as like, going in a caravan for and sure. getting stuck in Tijuana for months and shit. And they're giving you beans and now you all mad. <laughs> I just, uh, I was telling Chingo earlier. So now you guys, if you guys want to share some of these clips, I know uh, we post a lot of them on the Instagram account for the What Did He Said podcast, but they're also going up on YouTube, mm-hmm. CBTV. If you're not subscribed, go subscribe to Chingo's YouTube CBTV. channel. CBTV. That's right. And now if you type in Chingo Bling, you will see all the music. And now these clips uh, pop up immediately. Um, share them. You know, they're really short and they're easy to, to consume. I think people mm-hmm. like that. People have even commented, I like when you break it down this way. It's easier to digest. It's like little nuggets. And then if you're sharing it with a friend, you're just asking them for two minutes of their time versus like Chingo went on a two hour rant. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, but you can still watch the full episodes. Like somebody, I remember, I saw just commented. I just saw the most recent one, which was with uh, you, you solo and myself before you guys left. And it's like I'm hooked. Like I can't wait for the next one. That's great if you love sitting through all two plus hours or an hour and a half of it. But the little chunks are what really helps spread the word for it. And the more you like the videos and share them, subscribe, hit the notification bell, the more YouTube, the almighty algorithm, which is one of the clips we just posted recently that we were talking about AI and the algorithm. It's in charge of who it shows it to. So the more likes, the more subscribes, the more it's going to show it to other people. Which that algorithm, I think, adds to the illusion that we have a, a, a good, clean democracy. Yeah. Meaning that algorithm, like Rob just said, it helps dictate what you end up seeing. So if you're not seeing all the bad stories about Biden and you're only seeing the fake news about Trump and so on and so forth, is it even really a fair fight? It's like everything is stacked up against homeboy. And he still, I believe, had a millions and millions and millions of people go vote for him, including myself. And um, But no, here we are where you bring it up and it's like, take your L, your fucking red pill, tamale, conspiracy, tinfoil motherfucker. And um, y'all are just sore losers and y'all are a cult. They, they say all the Trump people are, are a cult. Just because some people have flags with his face or name on it yeah. or something like that. And uh, it was actually one of my producer friends, my DJ friends, that yeah. said that in the comment. And um, and I was like, okay, so when the Democrats don't allow you to leave, that's kind of like a cult. When the Democrats don't let you see information from the other side, that's kind of a cult. It's kind of cultish. By, by definition. Yeah. They want to isolate you from information. And I feel like that should be one of the mission statements about Red Pill Tamales podcast, which is we want to empower the listener by just arming them with more information. If you have more info, and more perspective and opinions and point of view, you're probably going to feel more empowered. Yeah. And that's not a bad thing to uh, to be focusing on and putting our energy because like, my comedian friends ask me all the time, like, yo, man, how are you navigating this weird world you're in now? Which is, I look at the comments, Chingo, from what it looks like, everybody hates you. And it's kind of hard to explain, like, uh, a lot of people enjoy it. And, I mean, shit, this is the biggest topic out. This is affecting everybody's life. If I'm sitting up, if I do a parody or if I fucking do a skit, yeah, that's cool, too. But... This is affecting people's lives and the comedy clubs ain't open to where I can just be like doing comedy all the time and you're not just going to hear from me on here. So it's kind of hard to explain to people like, no, you'd be surprised, man. A lot of people dig it. You know, it li it's it's me getting to be me and it lines up with where I'm at now, which is I'm a dad. I'm a husband. I'm 41. We're trying to have these adult conversations we're trying to raise kids in safe communities like i know from the rapper perspective it's like yeah trap you know flip make money what a dope bad bitch i pull up at your house you know what i mean kill 100 people in a verse and right i done sold all the dope and this and that i'm whipping the masa and you know it's like okay yeah that's cool like oh yeah they popping it in the club okay yeah that's cool but let's talk about education you know what i mean like yeah. where's the future of this country What's the shit going to look like to our grandkids? What kind of freedoms are they going to have? Can people still open businesses and expect to live off of them? Exactly. And if you think about it, that's really the gangster shit. The gangster shit is the real shit. The real shit is, are you free? There's nothing more gangster than that. There's nothing more fucking real and gangster than your fucking freedom. All this other shit about I pulling up, driving this... This the kind of whip, you know, my yeah. bitch looking like, damn, damn, she thick. You know what I mean? It's like throwing money, look at my jewelry. It's like, okay, that's cool. I rapped about all that for fucking damn 20 years. You know, they showing this, they popping that. I'm throwing money, throw it back, you know, and it's like. We know the memories Chingo remembers. <laughs> yeah, right? No, I mean, I got documentary footage. Some I know, I can't wait to put that out. I, I will show you some, Rob. It's, it's a lot of it's inappropriate and cannot come out. A lot of it needs to be destroyed. And when I look at some of this old footage, man, like I give myself a pass because I was young and stupid. But some of it, oh my God, it's just like, <laughs> oh, 
some of it is like, bro, what the fuck? Man? To, to answer doing? to the, some of the people or your comedic friends or anybody that says like, ah, oh, I see these comments, like how are you navigating through those waters? I To circle back to Gabe, actually, it might be, maybe you can have like an elevator pitch of a response, including what he said to you and say, look, if for the past 20 years, 15 to 20 years, I did X, Y, Z and connected with X, Y, Z audience who were all about it. And then found out how this other side of the spectrum, which would be the other half of the population, felt like that because of the way I was talking about a rapping or whatever. Don't wouldn't you think that uh, by definition or by example, I would have the other side also like now not just turn into a fan, but maybe join the people that are already on this side that feel the same way. Doesn't that kind of sound like the audience would not only grow, but like ex exponentially be bigger than the previous. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of hard to explain. But um, one thing I will add, I think Marisol's about to join us for the last couple minutes. That's cool. Are we? Do we have a big announcement to make? We're not making it yet. Marisol don't want to make it yet. Okay, we'll wait. We'll wait. So. I think we should only give that to the patrons. Okay, right. Hey, you, grab you, this uh, cable underneath the chingo on the table. That right here. Is that it? Oh, yeah. Okay. No, I'll grab it. Okay. So. Um, she's, she's oh, okay. So we were talking about. We were talking about how the real shit, the gangster shit is, is what we're talking about now, which is how free are you? Can you go to work? Like important stuff, money, capitalism. Soul came in at the perfect time. Stuff that rappers should care about. Don't even get me started. But, but hang on, hang on. Cause I, I'm like borderline about to lose my train of thought and I'm just okay. trying to rewind and walk myself yeah. through it. Uh, Cause we're talking about how is it that you have 20 years of a career where you're promoting one side, one thing, and then all of a sudden you start looking at shit different. It's like, you know, the guy that everyone hates thinks he's racist. I think I'm going to vote for that guy. Cause these reasons, um, what the fuck is my point? Cause I'm trying to walk myself through this. I'll, I'll walk it back as well. We're talking about, I said, bring back the Gabe story where this, Gabe, this, uh -huh. me, this, you know, Mexican American who can relate to you, wouldn't listen to you, wouldn't fuck with you because he wasn't about they can't divorce all. He wasn't about that message. And now that you're seeing like a comedic friend say, how are you navigating through those waters when you're talking about that? It's like, well, this whole other Got side, it. go. All right. So obviously for 20 years, it's like I'm the son of immigrants. I'm going based off emotion. I believe the news is real, mostly. And this is going back in the past, right? I'm sympathetic to immigrants. I'm thinking about how they scapegoat us and how these politicians use us every four years to get votes and how the media makes us look and all that, right? So I'm all in. I'm chingo bling. This is my art. It's from the Mexican-American perspective. And we're not all the way Mexican. We're not all the way American. But this is my version of hip-hop. In your face. Bam. But then you take a trip to Mexico and you see how they have conservatives and how most of Mexico is like, nah, we don't want all these Hondurans and these caravans coming through and they leaving drug needles or they're complaining about the black beans we give them. Or now there's just this big mobile homeless community posted up on the frontera and you see how they treat their immigrants. And here we are over here talking about. Like when Mexico plays the U.S. in soccer, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, I got to go for the raza. Dude, I know. Same here. Because it's like, that's, that, that's my people. You know, yeah. Chicharito and them and I, yep. my dad. You know? And then it's like, but do y'all realize that the same way y'all calling me a gringo coconut, that's what they're going to call you as soon as you step foot over there with your pocho ass, yeah. with your little broken Spanish. You see what I'm saying? So it's almost like hypocritical to try to just be like, Chingo wants to be white. He's a sellout now. He ain't about that life no more. It's like, well, I can explain why. If you listen to Red Pill Tamales, I can explain why it's not so clear cut to just be like, um, you know, tear down the wall. It's like, okay, if you do that, what's going to happen? Mm. <laughs> Who, who's really benefiting? Is it the globalists? Yeah. Like, why is it that Hillary and George Soros and all these people want loose borders? What's right. going on there? And so on. But, uh, but yeah, I think I got it out. Was good. Well, I, I think part of that uh, whole thing with um, you're trying to be white or whatever. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Th that's a uh, that's a uh, low information thinking. I feel because who told you that doing certain things is white? 
Well, I, think, I get list. it. I get it. Why people might do them more often yeah. than you, but that doesn't mean you can't do them. Yeah, that was actually on the list that we didn't yeah. even get to it yet. So I think the part of it is the Democrats have branded themselves through very savvy marketing and using people like Latino celebrities. They've branded themselves as we are the diverse for the brown, for the minority, for the downtrodden, for the um, the middle, lower class and we're not here. We're here to tax the rich, as AOC would say, right? Don't worry, y'all. If if you don't make four hundred thousand or more, you don't need to worry about that. Biden's tax plan won't affect you unless you're fifty cent. You know what I'm saying? So instantly, low information thinking is, huh? Chingo voted Republican. He turned his back on us. He no longer wants to be down with the brown like the Democrats. He's over there because he's scared to get taxed, and it's like. You don't even know. You're not even listening to my reasons. Yeah. I, I didn't give them the reasons like China and all kinds of other shit. And but they think like you want to be white because Republican means white. It's <laughs> like Biden's white too, motherfucker. And you know, going back to the whole immigrant thing, right? You come from immigrant parents, blah blah blah. I don't know if I've already said this on here before, but um, my mom and I would argue about that because. I didn't get how she was someone who was an immigrant, but was so against um, like open borders and anyone coming here. Totally. And so I would always be like, what are you talking about? Uh, I was you're like, such a hypocrite. you're such a, yeah, it would be like, you're such a hypocrite. You know what I'm saying? She's like, you don't get it. You don't get it. It has nothing to do with that. She, first of all, my mom till this day will tell you she never asked to come here. It was my dad who wanted to come because mm. my grandparents had already come over here. So he wanted to be with his entire family. It was only my mom and him left behind. Everybody else had already moved to Houston. So my mom was like, why? We live well here. Like we have, you know, my dad had a great job. So my mom didn't see the reason why she needed to come to the U.S. You know, she saw it as people go to the U.S. because financially you need to move over there. You know what I'm saying? Like you need to make more money. So anyway, it was always an argument. And it was like we could never talk about things like that. Funny thing is that we're talking about this, but someone sent me a DM today and they said that um, they're so happy that we, yeah, I feel like I'm that we came out and I think that sounds yeah, so funny sounds like, very <laughs> like you know like you that we came your, out your which I don't really know what that means you know yeah. it's like it's like that you came out as a conservative uh, or a Republican I said I'm not a, I don't want to I'm not a Republican yeah because yeah. if they have a shitty candidate yeah, next time I'm not gonna vote for that yeah. person I'm not you know? gonna so, be a cheerleader for a political party so no. she was just saying she's like which is what we've talked about she said I had school public schools telling me that I had to be the Democrat because I was an inner city Mexican kid. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, the news told me that Univision told me that all my life that, you know, I need to be a Democrat. Like don't even look over there because they're old white men. Yeah. You're never going to be that. You know, I see it in the comments. Chingo, you think those Republicans like, you know, they want to deport you. They hate you. (laughs) Talk about mind reading. And so it was funny that she said all those things because she says till this day, she has a hard time. Um, you know, she can't speak to family about, you know, politics or anything like that, she says, but that she's got her parents now become have become Republican. This is somebody that DM'd you, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I left my phone. I wish I could read the exact the okay. exact um, DM that she sent me. And then uh, she said that, you know, uh, her her parents and I think like her in-laws, I think now are kind of on their side, you know. And uh, I asked her when she became a Republican and she said it was in 2012 where she just she goes, I just started to get curious. She's like, it was like I had seen one thing and then I was having a conversation and it was another thing. And I, I, she was like, where's the missing info here in the middle? Like, why you mean no th- hope and change actually y- happened during yeah, Obama? Yeah. And so she, she just kind of didn't really understand why, what was happening here. Right. So she said that's when she kind of went down her little rabbit hole where she started doing her research and so forth. And I told her, I said, now that we're talking about it. I was based, raised very obviously with conservative values because my parents were very religious, you know. Did I, did I do it because uh, I was trying to rebel? When I was talking to her. About you? Yeah, like we were having convos because I still agree with a lot of the stuff my parents sure. would, would, you know, kind of teach, you know. But I used to be like, I'm still very, and, and Pete will tell you, I'm still very like, 
well, you know, there's still like, you know, there's got to be a way we can help, et cetera, you know, yeah. what I'm saying? or whatever it is, you know, I'm still like, you know, there's still certain things that I don't see all the way, the way uh, from the Republican or a conservative point of view. Um, but I thought that was really interesting that she reached out and she said that and she was just thanking us for having the red pill tamales because she says that she always feels alone. Like she can't ever have a conversation with a lot of her friends because they don't understand where she's coming from. Do you know she was older or younger? I didn't ask her. I didn't ask her, but um, maybe I'll ask her. Um, but going speaking about all these things, when you posted the... Um, clip about um me saying that you know i wanted to be married before having oh, children man, I got so much feedback on that okay so someone tagged a conservative uh female account where she calls herself a conservative female or something like that that's her hand okay <laughs> yeah i think that's her handle and um I might be wrong but anyway i went on her account and i went down a rabbit hole on her account <laughs> because she made such good points and here's the thing she did this whole series of women who were so liberal, feminist, you know, um, just very far left, who converted um, conservative and Republican and their reasons why. And a lot of the women talked about how toxic their life was the other way because they never allowed their husband to be the male role in their uh, home. They wanted to be the aggressor. They wanted to be the, the aggressor because it's all about women power yeah. and it's all about boss mom and it's all about this yeah. and that, you know, Hey, if you can do it, I can do it too. One of the testimonies that I read was very interesting because she said that she was like, well, wait a minute. I had a career. Why can't, why can you do your career? And I can't do mine. You know, I don't want to do that. But for financial reasons, he's in the mil he was in the military or he is, I don't know. It's just like an old post that I went through and, um, financially they couldn't afford for the children to be in daycare for, you know, as many days of the week. So they agreed that she would stay home. And she said she was very miserable at the beginning because she felt like I'm less than, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I'm not equal to you, you know? And finally, she kind of found her way through God, right? And I'm not saying you have to go through God in order for you to feel this way, but she found herself with, you know, going to Bible study and so forth. And she kind of understood that, wait a minute, there is a female role and there's a male role in the, in the marriage. And in order for it to work, you have to allow each individual to do their job. So when she apologized to her husband, because she said that their relationship had become super toxic, like to where it's like, she just kind of was very resentful towards him, which I get, I, I can see. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, she just said when she apologized to her husband for now, you know, for always being so aggressive and saying, you know, you don't do enough and blah, 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 blah. He's like, all I ever wanted to do was take care of you and my family. I never wanted you to work. It had nothing to do with you're less than me. Uh, you know, you're, you can't do as much as I can. It was just, I wanted to go. He said, basically he wanted to be able to come home and know that his wife was there and his kids were there so that they could have dinner. Yeah. They could sit down. I was like, she just had an epiphany after that. Oh, like, oh it makes sense. I was like, it was so simple, ma'am. It yeah. was so simple, <laughs> you know? And it's part of like not communicating. And I think a lot of times it has to do with, it is true how women just want to be like, Fuck yeah, girl power. You know, men can't do this shit. We can't do. I get it, but that's why we're made different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of things men can't do. I, I foresee a uh, Marisol podcast series where it's like traditional or talking about feminism. I really want gender someone, roles. Another DM was you guys touched about feminism. She, he's like, I really, I think I told you that. I mm -hmm. sent you the screen, screenshot. And uh, if she's listening, I, I promise we've already talked about it. We are going to touch on it. But I really feel it's important because I think the far left have turned feminism into something it's not. You know what I'm saying? To where it's like we've taught that we don't need a man. You know what I'm saying? We're taught that it's not, you know, it's better to be a career woman than a, a, a you know, a stay at home mom, you know, which both jobs are amazing. You know what I'm saying? Whichever one you choose to do, you know? So, um, one thing maybe people could pay attention to is when you hear 
when you hear an agenda or a movement like an extreme far left male bashing, like girl power is cool. I have nothing but daughters and, you know, I yeah. love all the women in my family, my sisters, my mom, so on. And um, so, yeah, to a certain extent, it's like, no, that's good. You know, we want equality and empowerment and shit like that. And uh, but sometimes when it becomes divisive or like you can look at it and be like, hmm, is this a way, is this an example of complain and make a big old scene so you, you can gain some power? Or who's gaining power out of this, right? Mm-hmm. Even with the whole, like, defund the police or, um, uh, you know, black trans lives matter. You know what I mean? Like, all these, yeah, of course, all, yeah, of course they matter, right? Yeah. It's like, but is this somebody's agenda to try to just get control and power? Like, for example... For example, with these elections that are arguably faulty, right? I don't want to get ding, ding, ding. Don't want to get kicked off. But allegedly, yeah. Think about all the folks that were on the left hitting the streets with the violence, whether it was George Floyd, uh, like BLM type stuff, or just Antifa, or all these little Chaz things, like all the. We're tired of waiting, you know, a little bit of anarchy, a little bit of looting or just burn some shit or we're trying to burn federal buildings and we're calling Trump's uh, sending police or whatever down there, uh, federal, whatever. Like That's Trump's Gestapo or whatever. It's like a power grab. And the minute you try to say, hey, y'all shouldn't be doing it's like, what? <sighs> Well, we're Antifa. We're anti-fascism. How dare you tell me that I can't protest in Portland? It's like, because y'all are doing a little bit more than protesting. <laughs> yeah. Right? Are you, though? And then as soon as the Proud Boys or somebody goes out there, one of them fucks up. Now the whole club gets a bad rap. So you shouldn't have even just went along with this whole like club thing. Because now whoever does some bullshit, you're lumped in like it's a gang. So I guess, I guess if my point is... Look out for, whenever you see stuff, look out for, is this a power grab? For example, with all the stuff about elections, nobody really from the right is contesting. Like, nobody is, like, taken to the streets, except for the little marches and stuff they do for Trump. But it's kind of like whoever... But they're peaceful. They're not, like, they're not... Yeah, they're out there. Those are actual peaceful. Yeah, those are actual peaceful. Like for real peaceful. And not I'm not just media. taking their side. I've actually watched legit yeah. footage from, you know... Rallies. It was like Democrats, liberals, and left that were over there harassing uh, Trump supporters and hit trying to hit them. And I was just like, "Come on, guys! I mean, we don't we come don't, on!" It's like people saying, "He's like, we don't know." They might like, just been assholes. They might have just been thugs. Sure, right? Because I was Democrat a year ago, so it's <laughs> kind of like you can't just say all the Biden supporter. They probably were by coincidence, yeah, because they just hate Trump. That's the reason. They probably didn't even vote some of these motherfuckers. They just probably were bored. They had shit to do and wanted to tear some shit up. But the reason I brought it up, it's like the elections were already uh, very contested. And you have one side taken to the streets, taking the power, you know, I don't want to say crying and complaining, but like, yeah, get him out of the office. And they take to the streets and they're intimidating people and they're bullying you're not allowed to look at the vote counts and a whole bunch of bullying going on. And all the Republicans could do is be like, uh, we have some concerns. Shut up. Take your L. Censored. Uh, shadow ban. You're in Twitter jail. And it's like, OK, so basically whoever whoever controls the streets and owns that movement really mm-hmm. runs the country. Because nobody else is willing to go out and the minute you do try and contest, it turns into a bad situation and now they call you a proud boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or if you say stand by, stand back. Now you're a fucking Hitler. <laughs> and it's like, okay, don't stand by, don't stand back. Just let motherfuckers tear down Target. And they, they got a Chaz out yeah. there in Seattle and a little Chaz somewhere else and a chop over there. And it's like, so many things have happened that, like, I forget some of these blips of, like, shit like that. Like, what was the context again of that stand back and stand by? Like, I know he said it at one of the debates. Uh, they, they kept uh, trying debates. To, Basically, man, the way, the way the media approached Trump is totally different how they interview Biden. With Biden, it's like a massage. It's like, 
So, Brian, what kind of ice cream? Yeah, they're talking about ice cream and puppies. Oh, yeah, my son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the smartest guy I know. My son Hunter's the smartest guy I know. Smartest guy I know. It's like, well, he is pretty smart. He put together an international money laundering (laughs) operation and has gotten away with it thus far. Thus far. (laughs) My mom, speaking of that, she, um, my mom's big time, Pete will tell you. uh, Whoa. She came up a few times in the podcast. My mom, something else. She'll send me something. I'm like, Ma, stop sending me all these videos, man. Like, God. Like, I get it like, from Chingo. I get it from Rob. Know, and I got to get it from you. You know, she's 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 always said if she died and came back, she'd love to be an anthropologist. Like, she loves history. She loves, uh-huh. you know, anything. Her brothers are the same way. Um, when we went, you know, they're the, I don't know why they're like that, but they're like that. And so they'll tell you the whole history of whatever. Ask them a question. They'll tell you, like, from the 1800s and you're like okay that's like what happened last week not yeah. then you know but anyway um she was like tú sabes cómo conoció su esposa a Biden cómo mm-hmm. conoció su esposa and I'm like uh yeah I guess I think they were like cheating or he was a his friend's wife or something like that she goes Marisol eso es una cosa tan horrible and she she just goes <laughs> into it it was descaradamente que descarado y la gente no lo sabe porque Nadie no hablan de no hablan de eso and it's so funny because she just be you know you can't fool her she goes mm Mm-hmm. Lo que dicen en las noticias. And then she's like, es que la gente no se pone a leer. That's you so know? funny. You know what I'm saying? You an example. And all her stuff, don't think that she's reading this stuff in English, because English like is this. not her... Que no podemos descartar del todo que llegue a ser presidente de los Estados Unidos. El That's señor Biden está actualmente <laughs> en medio de una serie de denuncia de abuso sexual a una mujer. Ahora, antes de eso... Ya había... It's like that. <laughs> It's basically... All the it's like some Ben Shapiro shit translated. Yeah. So they're like uh, sniffing little girls' hair, inappropriate shit, corruption. I ain't did shit for forty seven years. The shit I've been trying to tell y'all. There's a lot of raza and Latinos and Spanish speaking people that are woke as fuck, especially Cubans and Venezuelans, because they're super paranoid and hypersensitive to what's going on where they're from. They're just where they're from. They're just not free. And uh, instead of just dismissing those people, it's like. Oh, those crazy Florida people that hate their own. Instead of think about it, man. Especially if you're a, a high-profile Latino entertainer. If you're a high-profile Latino entertainer, before you start canceling, like uh, dismissing people, maybe keep an open mind. I don't give a damn. You a lifelong Democrat from California. Mm-hmm. Keep an open mind as to put yourself in their shoes. Why, why, why are there so many Latinos for Trump out of Florida, and and why so many Cubans and Latinos are like trying to ring the alarm? Like we saw this happen to us. Like we see the playbook. And then a Venezuelan Uber driver is gonna tell you, like, hey man, y'all might want to see what happened in our country from 1998, not that long ago, to now. What what happened uh, across a few elections? So when uh one of those conservative <laughs> conservative tweet uh one of those girls that I follow she put on there she goes yes it's true our hospitals are uh to the to the rim brim um you know we have everybody in our corners are infected and the second strain is here it's in Florida we were the first like just telling you all the bad things so please stay in your blue state and don't move here <laughs> you know what I'm saying it was so funny because it was like everything all the all the news, talking points. all the talking points, yeah. and then it's like, so stay in your blue state and don't uh, move here. That's funny. But she, that person's from Florida, so because you know they're su- they're super open. Did you tell them about our trip and the people we bumped yeah, into? Oh, yeah, cheers. That we, was cool. Yeah, it yeah, took it us really a while. Cool. It took us a while to get into like the pork and the bills, and and um, we didn't even touch upon nationalists versus globalists. So let me just do that real quick. We're uh, an hour forty in. Yeah, we're hour forty. So maybe I'll maybe I'll wrap up with this, but um. Some of these terms, it's like it's like an onion. It's like I'm barely on the little outer type layers. And all you guys that are listening, you're hearing the cliff notes. R- no, no, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. That's not what I'm trying to say. You're hearing the real time evolution uh-huh. of my opinions. Sure. So just because I have an opinion on Monday don't mean that's going to be the opinion by Wednesday. Not saying I'm wishy washy, but. But you continue to learn. That's yeah. why. And this shit is fucking intricate. And it gets weird. Like Rob was breaking down. Like sometimes it ain't even about the political party. Sometimes like some shit is over 
Trump's pay grade. Like you can't even, it's just the way the government works. And why is there pork in the bill? And why do we have to send millions for a wall in Jordan and, and gender studies in Pakistan and who put that in there? What is that, though? I looked up to see what gender studies were, and I couldn't find anything. So I haven't. Uh, one of the guests I told Chingo I have lined up is an expert in con- like in con- like breaking down congressional bills. Like <gasps> that is what she does, and has been done for almost ten years. And I've known her since she started that show. Uh, I haven't mentioned it. Yet. I'm gonna wait till she comes on. But it's like it's interesting shit, and that's why I bro- I said it's not about playing politics or taking sides. It's about the government, like the yeah. strings that are being pulled. Mm-hmm. Some of these groups and organizations, and to which some of these senators and congressmen and women sit on boards of these groups you've never heard of, but they're the ones that control things like that. It's really interesting. Wow. Yeah. So some of the terms that I stumbled across, and I'm, you know, trying to explore more, is nationalist versus globalist. Um. According to the definition, I'm paraphrasing, nationalist is basically like America first. That's why they were throwing that term white nationalist Mm -hmm. around. So it's basically America first, worry about our own backyard. We got problems here. Why are we sending money everywhere else? Globalist is more like, well, it's a global economy. And I don't know if Fauci is one of them. I think Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg is one. Don't quote me, but maybe we can kind of look up a list of like some of the influential or actual globalists so they look at the globe more as like a global village and it's okay if china wins for a hundred years and we kind of take a back seat and it's okay Mm -hmm. if russia's a superpower or like it's okay to send money everywhere and it's okay to have loose borders because you have refugees or like everything is more nuanced i guess um but when that when those memes came out about how they were sending money everywhere else except for us it seemed like everybody and their mom suddenly went from globalist to nationalist. <laughs> the Cholos, everybody is like, hey, fool, America first, homie. Like, what's up, dog? Where you from, homie? Was Zimbabwe and shit, dog? <laughs> Why is my check so small? Make it bigger. Yeah. You know what's funny, though? Speaking about that, babe, mm-hmm. um, when I was younger, I used to say, well, if I never have children, I at least want to adopt a, pay- a, a baby from Mexico or China or, you know what I'm saying? An orphanage out of the country. Like legit or adopt a family type stuff? No, no, no. Like legit okay. job, adopt a child. Because I thought, like, who needs a husband? <laughs> you were one of them. The old mm. myself. Jesus. Now, I wasn't I wasn't extreme like that. But you never... Remember my cousin gave me shirts that say feminist on them yeah. with the, for the girls? Uh-huh. And remember at first I was like, mm, I don't really consider myself a feminist. <laughs> and, and he goes... But we kind of are. We're all. We have a bunch of females. You know, it is it about girl, girl power. power. It just means girl power. So it's or all right. Does it? And I was like, <laughs> oh. you're promoting an agenda. And I was like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? And then I was okay with wearing it, right? Because at first I felt like feminists were like too extreme for me. Always, yeah. it wasn't. It to me it hasn't started now. And I don't know if it's the circle of women or maybe the jobs I was in where it was. It was. A bunch of women you know what i'm saying so i don't know if that was the case but anyway it was funny because whenever i started working um for the um foster agency and i saw how many kids in america need a place to live i thought my parents are foster parents yeah for if i ever oh, adopt i would adopt here in the u.s because i never realized that we have the same issues that other countries have and we focus so much on adopting out of the country versus in our own country yeah. and that was like you know i then it was like my my mind i changed my mind i was like well if i ever adopt a child it'll be here no yeah. longer you know from mexico or because those were my two where is either gonna be from mexico or china you know what i'm saying yeah. so it was funny because i wouldn't I wouldn't now, you know what right. I'm saying? Now that I saw it firsthand, yeah. like how many children I here mean, Tons need of it. kids in our city, in our county. Um, I grew up with all kinds of little foster brothers, foster sisters. Mm, interesting. Uh-huh, for years. And then I went off to that prep school, <clears> and so I didn't really see them as much, only when I'd come home. Yeah, so. But yeah. It's, it's, that's, there's, I do feel that a lot of things, we have a lot of problems here, like the homeless problem. You know what I'm saying? Um, I saw somebody break down. I know it's, they're coming out with more and more videos of LA, you know, just how the homeless people and how it's, it's crazy. Like yesterday, last night I was watching a video of this guy going down downtown LA, some of the most beautiful brand new high rises and apartments that would rent for, you know, four or five K a month or renting for two under two K a month with brand new, st- you know, places, all the restaurants, all the stores are boarded up still. It's like a fucking third world country in downtown Los Angeles. But Nobody could fight back. I mean, Newsom just makes the rules. 
uh, the media keeps perpetuating this thing. It's it's murky. We don't know how well masks work. I mean, they work, and then it's like, well, now NPR says that you're wasting your time cleaning surfaces because the virus pretty much dies seconds after it's just out and about. On so it's like, okay, so how does this shit work, and why why are these businesses closed? Like, but the Target's open, Walmart's open. Uh, follow Chef Gruel uh, on, well, on social media. Well, my thing mm-hmm. behind it is. So does I? Th- I told you this. It was I was so mad the other day. I was just like, oh, because um, we're trying to get involved with helping working homeless. So they're working, but because of this pandemic, newly homeless. They're newly homeless. Uh, so like they just got lost so, so yeah, yeah. they've lost everything because of the pandemic. They're still working, but they couldn't keep up with you know less hours. The other partner lost the job, you know. So when we were in Boston, my girlfriend and I were talking, and she's like, let me know if you'd like to be a part of this. I, I said, of course, because uh, I hate saying what we what we, we yeah. do for helping. But anyway, we helped out. We adopted a family. We helped out. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, um, so she and I, and, and it, when she showed me, she sent me a picture of the Christmas tree she got them. And I just, I just, my heart just like felt so good. I was like, I'm so happy these kids won't know, even if it's, if it's their first Christmas without at least the little that we gave, they'll be able to not feel like they're without. So it brought joy to me. Right. Mm-hmm. So I said, I just want to know, I want to know how we can do more. So then I didn't talk to her, you know, while we were out there, we were just cool, whatever. And then she sends me a message. She's like, Hey, um, remember you said there was, you wish you, I was like, yeah, what, what's up? So she, I think, I think it's called fresh. It's a new organization that works with the like, um, shelters here. And I don't quote me on the name of this organization. I could be wrong. And I left my phone inside, but anyway, uh, she was saying that there's so many people who are just recently homeless. They're still working. And they're having to like figure it out during the day, don't know where to go, you know, and then they're having to rush to get to the shelters, you know, families get in first. So, but they're still hella packed, you know what I'm saying? So then I was telling Pete, okay, so what are the shelters able to do now to help prevent COVID? Because it's like being in a hospital, right? Now it's like I mean, now you, you don't know, you don't. I don't know you. We're in yeah. the shelter together, right? You shelter, know what I'm saying? It's like a group home. It's like all kinds of people. I don't know if it's cots or what, but it, the only one we visited was the one during Harvey in Dallas. But and it, those was, were, it was like a park, a community center. But I'm assuming you're in shared spaces. So now, for because COVID is so bad and so scary, these people weren't allowed to work, so now they're homeless. So now they're in a shelter where they're probably gonna be more exposed to. Where it. they're probably at bigger <laughs> risk. It's just ironic. So it's yeah. like, do I was I was sitting there and I was like, super mad at this point. I'm like, do they not get it? Everybody's like, keep it shut down. No, it's like guys. Guys, get pick up like an economics book just for a little bit. Even go borrow one from a high school student because that's just the basics of what yeah, it, they're not using it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like they're on Zoom. Yeah, exactly. You saw that bill that supposedly is going to go through. I sent it to you yeah, yesterday. Yeah. You know, it's really complicated. I don't really kind of understand it. Read, one, read, read that, yeah, yeah, like I had to like go through the thing like several times. But anyhow, um, you know, p- people just want to get back to work. Not everybody likes to live off of government. You know what I'm saying? And what six hundred dollars is going to do for Bruh. anybody? For anybody, even for the maybe a you single person. A, you could buy a Glock. <laughs> a single person may be able to survive with six hundred dollars, and that's assuming that you're living at someone else's house. For sure. Because how much is your rent if you don't? If you haven't already lost where you live? Yeah. And, you know, I saw people like, oh, they, you know, they passed the uh, 2000, you know, from 600 to 2000 for the stimulus check. I'm like, no, fools. Like, that's only in the House. It's probably going to die at the Senate. Like, it's probably not going to pass tomorrow they, when they did, vote on What it. is it? His name? McConnell? Mitch McConnell. Con- he vetoed it. Yeah. No more spending. You know, the fucking So he old vetoed man. the 2K, so now back to 600? It was always 600, yeah. The, the amendment, I mean, si- uh, Trump signed it after, like, what, four or five days of, you know, saying it was a disgrace mm-hmm. and all that. And goes ahead and signs it, and, you know, he's getting backlash for that because he called it a disgrace and then went ahead and signed it anyway. Oh, damn if you do, damn if you don't. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And, this uh, poor man. <laughs> God, Everyone's wait. like, well, he was too busy playing golf. He should have did something sooner. And I'm like, he he's only, been bugging Nancy exactly. Pelosi. Since May. <clears throat> since May. 
And then if you look at, I saw this meme. What does she want that he's not giving her? <laughs> well, she he agreed. They, they agreed on the two thousand now, but there there was. I mean, it's more the Senate, Mitch McConnell, Treasury Secretary, all some of these people that are also have to agree on it before Trump can even sign it. So. That's the whole thing. The negotiations were between the two sides, the House and the Senate. Trump was like, agree, I'll sign it. And they just never came to an agreement. And Mitch McConnell again said, we're not doing $2,000 checks, which he is a Republican. But, you know, he gave reasons like earlier, Chingo and I were talking, I think, off air. Like, I think Dan Crenshaw said, a lot of Republicans are like, look, this isn't a fo focused money. There's people that are still working from home remotely that didn't lose their salaries that are also getting 2K. Yeah. Why? There's people that don't have money that are being excluded. You know, why? Uh, it's just a blanket approach. Yeah. Because we're having to borrow money from future generations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the argument there. It's and that's what I was telling Pete. I said, so what happens? Because I was having a conversation with someone um, who knows someone who shall remain anonymous yeah i'm gonna remain anonymous. i'm not gonna say right but obviously they know very they know and for this person to tell me yeah i think um 2021 is gonna be like 2020 it's gonna go on for a while no i said this at the beginning he said that joe rogan said uh, i have shows scheduled for october september 2021 and i don't know he's not expecting to do them jo uh joey diaz said guys from a Looking at my comedy career, he's like, "This is a this Corona thing is a three year thing." And he's like, "I don't have a lot of expectations, especially at his age." Mm -hmm. He's like, "I don't know where it's going." And then I'm only 41, and who knows? Maybe we had a good run yeah. when we hit that window. Uh, we managed to get a Netflix special out and, and tour like crazy for a couple years, but who knows, man? If they keep playing these games. I don't know the future of live entertainment. Yeah. And so when when the, I was talking to him and he said that to me, I was like, wait a minute. I think he's right. I'm like, I don't even think by June it'll be. It's just going to be more social. It's going to be. I think it's going to get worse. And then that here was here is my question. When I was talking to Pete, I said. Unless you're Walmart, Amazon, where, Target. Where are they getting all this money from? And how will that affect our future yeah. after this is all over? <clears throat> What's going to happen to us? Like, Chingo warned what? You know. So you haven't worked. You've been dependent on the government, right? Because But even then, have you, though? Because they haven't given you shit. True, true, true. Very true that you haven't gotten shit. But I'm just saying for those who, I guess, were able to get unemployment, for those, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they, they cut it off for you guys for, for unemployment. You know what I'm saying? And, and then what? You know what I'm saying? What do you do? What do you do? OK, I'm going to give you an example like my mom. Right. Let's just say they do end up saying hair salons because they're not considered essential. You know, those close down again. My mom doesn't know anything else but that. My mom is 59 years old. So what job would she get? What job? Yeah. She's done this for over 30 years. She's been a hairdresser for 30. Where is she going to go apply a job? At Walmart? That's where? Shit, they might go ahead and agree on UBI in the future and have a universal basic income. You know? And then the United States kind of goes down that road, which Andrew Yang broke down. And a lot of people were behind and Bernie has broken down. And again, you know, in theory, that's like, okay, UBI. Doesn't sound like a terrible idea, right? But a lot of people then lose all motivation and all aspirations to actually amount to more if you have... A Kush UBI. I think the way Yang was presenting, framing it, is that there's a, what is it? The robots are going to start taking more and more jobs. Yeah. I think, I don't know if it was artificial intelligence, but basically that, that version of this industrial revolution where entire industries are going right. to be wiped out. Maybe, arguably, COVID just helped accelerate what was going to happen anyway to mm. commercial real estate, to the streaming game where like now you hear, AM, uh, what is it? The future of Hollywood is now you can stream it the same day. It's going to hit theaters. You can also stream it at home. Yeah, but that Wonder was Woman. already, but that was already starting to, you were already starting to hear. It, it, we it already knew that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, it accelerated. Exactly. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. basically telling you, you ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get comfortable, get your zoom, get your Twitch, get your whatever. Yeah. And, Unless you're Walmart, Amazon, big box stores. Corona doesn't live there. And it's almost there. like if we would unite as Americans and stop shopping at these big corporations, the thing is, is there's no local grocery exactly, store. Yeah. You can't support so local throughout where, shutdown. Where are you going to go buy groceries? If Maybe like uh, the carnicerias? Yeah. Everybody becomes an urban farmer. Right? I mean, no, no. Like that's planting. probably what we need to do. 
because eventually like how do you support if you if people stopped going to walmart target um h-e-b uh well h-e-b is more still i mean they're big but, but they're only in texas yeah they're big but you can't compare them to amazon right amazon literally just sells a bunch of shit made in china it's just like the marketing branch of chinese products in a way 90 i don't know the percentage but like most of that shit is just made in china I think the answer eventually is going to come, and this is what I was saying earlier about how 2021 is going to be worse, than, in my opinion. And I'm, yeah. an, I'm an optimist, but I'm, I don't see that for 2021, is that people are just going to revolt and say, hey, I'm not wearing the mask. I'm opening my business. Go fuck yourself. I need to make a living. What are you going to do? You're going to arrest everybody? But everybody has to band together and do that. And I'm seeing more and I more agree. of these videos where people are congregating together at one centralized gym, one restaurant, and saying, look, everybody on this <coughs> block, everybody in this <clears throat> county, everybody in this city can't do it anymore everybody has to do it at once and then they can't do anything because it's true you know they can't how do you enforce yeah you can't do that you can't i mean you can't do this to people i mean like that's what i said it's like but they've weaponized <sighs> sectors of the public for example cholos with keyboards have been weaponized for the left they have no idea they're on the same side i don't know if they approve of antifa <clears throat> and everything i don't know if, don't know if cholos are pro-abortion they're all these they're just on the well, I don't left. Think it's just Charles. I, I don't know what you're. That's kind what, of generalizing. What but. I mean is this. This is what I mean. This is what I mean. I love when you use that phrase up. No, no. Here's what I mean. Here's what I mean. All right. Everyone needs to band together to revolt. Right. That's what we're talking mm -hmm. about. We all need to just bum rush CVS without our masks <laughs> and be like, no fucking more. You can't. You can't. This shit doesn't make any sense. Right. We all agree. Everyone here. We're gonna work out in this gym. Whatever the the civil disobedience is, right? Mm -hmm. We're all going to open up our restaurants. The problem is they've weaponized, like they've literally, there's people in the public that will snitch on you. Yeah. They'll try to cancel you. They'll tell on you. Uh, they'll call you out, whether you're a Karen or a Cholo with a keyboard. They're going to help fight these. They're going to be on the side of the establishment and rob you better fucking put your fucking mask on and how dare you, ma'am, be in here. In other words, not only will they be like, oh, those people aren't following the rules. Yeah. They're going to fucking tattletale. Take you down. And call the fucking hotline and shit. And, and, and because they've already been brainwashed to believe that, you know, y'all are fucking QAnon conspiracy, freedom loving weirdos. They want to come in here and, and break rules when really they're shutting us down because it's for our own good. When I see those videos of uh, the people that have brick and border restaurants, gyms, whatever, you know, breaking down of like, I'm going to lose my mind and yeah. they'll probably end up killing themselves. A lot of them will. That's dark, but I mean, that's just what's who, happening. Who is? What you people mean? that are losing their livelihoods. Oh. That's like where the suicide rate is skyrocketing, that's, right? Honestly, that's where it's going, Rob, because these people, you can see it in their face oh, where yeah. they're just like done. Yeah, like they're what the fuck am I living for? Like yes, some of the guys like, I'm 62 years old. I just want to live my days out with my business and my family and whatever. And if I can't do that, then what the fuck? So when I see these videos of people that are outside, video recording the health inspector and the county you know judge at a restaurant trying to cite somebody and shut them down if everybody just came in that restaurant formed a line got their food the workers were working what are they going to do cite everybody and get everybody out of the restaurant like, you can't do that like people just need to go ahead and do it and then see you know, like joey diaz says uh, let the pieces fall where they may basically because other than that other other than that people are just going to keep losing their minds it makes me so mad i mean every time I, I send you a dm or a video i'm like i just can't anymore i can't i can't take this anymore and like, we're free here we're in texas we're in houston we're pretty free compared to a lot of these other states and cities that are really suffering so it's like we're complaining on their behalf like we're, we're feeling it for you guys even though it's you know we could say you fucking voted for this i guess i don't know but I kind of feel like they're okay with it. Because when we were in Boston, I felt like everybody was okay with it wearing a mask. Goes along like, I don't think anyone cared about to. it. I think, if anything, we were the only ones that were like, Man, we're I outside. can't fucking breathe, man. This shit. I'm, it's like two degrees. I was starting to sweat. My mustache yeah. sweating. Yeah. Right. I'm like yeah. starting to sweat right here where you have to wear it itchy. everywhere, you know? I mean, and, and I get it. I know it's real. I know people that have passed from it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I'm not saying anything. Yeah, it's not, not real. The yeah. virus is real, right? Yeah. My thing is, is like, y'all still don't know what, how it spreads. Y'all still ain't figured it out. No, they're like, uh, you're wasting your time cleaning surfaces. Or like, for instance, in the beginning, every cashier, every clerk had on rubber gloves and they touch your debit card with the, now they're just like, 
whatever. And some, the poor people at Ikea that work there, they have like plexiglass all around them. It looks fucking ridiculous. It looks crazy. They're what? Like, yes, we went yesterday to get <laughs> Penny a, a little caddy or whatever. And it's like this. I was and, I and wasn't paying were like, attention. No, no, sir, what item, what aisle? And they're like. Oh, you can't like hear them and shit. Yeah. Oh my God, TSA. Oh, how was that? In Boston, I was getting so annoyed and I was trying with every might to just keep it calm. Not because and not trying to conservative not, Karen. Conservative Karen. I can't. Karin. You, they're they're all they're doing is repeating. You know everything. Yeah. The same thing to make sure you do, do, do. You know what I'm saying? The same. But you have a plexiglass like this. Plus you have a shield. Plus you have a mask. So oh, I said what? I said I can't understand what you're telling me. I said so. What are you saying? And she just looks at me. Put your data, and then she finally kind of lifted her little shield up. I'm like, you want me to follow instructions, but I can't even understand what you're Bro, telling me. It's so wild how just a year ago. I know. Just a year ago, doctors agreed that like only symptomatic people can spread illnesses, and all of a sudden, it's like, no, we don't know. You may be asymptomatic. Have they figured out? Can you be asymptomatic and spread it? Yeah, I think they said you can. Apparently, okay. that's last I heard. <sighs> So I don't know, See? but that's a big part of the puzzle as to why everybody like, for example, um, I, I don't know. I guess I'm the frame of thought of like me right now. Yeah. I don't have a fever. I have no symptoms, no chills, no nothing. I haven't been tested in a couple weeks, yeah. but like I feel fine. I don't think I'm contagious. I don't think I'm spreading anything. And it's like none of us have fevers. Well, I did the I test. And after I did the test, I no longer could smell. After the test, that's when you. After the smoke. test, yeah. I was fine before that. After the test, I no oh, longer they just can drew smell. Blood, though. They just I know, but well, how you weird the, is that? You did the antibody I, test? Uh, yeah. So. Did you have the antibodies? No, oh. I didn't have nothing. Yeah, our shit came back negative. Negative. Every time. So, <clears throat> I mean. That's weird. It was, isn't it weird that I no longer, I can't, I still can't smell. You know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, well, don't I sound go. like? You gotta go. Like. And, uh, every- oh, I thought you just said you gotta go. <laughs> no, you gotta go, go get up out of here. And like sometimes, yeah, we had two hours right now. Uh, <laughs> you gotta go, girl. <laughs> and you know, like sometimes I'll have like a metal taste in my mouth. You yeah. know, so it's weird. You know, so I, I had a really bad sinus infection. I thought it was COVID, so I went to go get tested. It came back negative, but then after that, I no longer could smell. Well, you probably still have some sinus shit going on, and you need to go. To the doctor. Man, I just think it's weird, yo. It is weird. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Weird. I think it's weird that it happened after. We're I've had the... sinus issues before. We're gonna get it checked out, and uh, uh, I really encourage my soul uh, when she gets her own podcast back to popping to explore some of these topics yeah. even more because the ladies seem to like when they get that female perspective and. There's just so much to cover. Like, we didn't even get through everything. Yeah, so the New Year's episode is going to be popping as we're recording again on Thursday, which is New Year's Eve, and it'll drop on oh, New Year's right. Day. My mm. bad, dude. I scheduled you on No, no, no. It's fine. What the fuck else are we going to do? It's already one of the most dangerous days Where, to go out anywhere. Yeah, I don't it's, like going out anywhere. Mm-mm. And uh, I used to, like, I, I'll leave anything before midnight. So oh, yeah. Before I even get to... I, I won't do it. Dude, even in a pandemic here, I wouldn't, like, oh, the streets probably be less full. Like, I don't give a fuck. It's still New Year's Eve. Pandemic or no p- pandemic? Well, I saw that. I saw someone posted that a, a drunk driver killed a police officer and his dog. Mm. And um, I was like, where are you going to right now that you're drinking and driving? Like, I thought they shut down bars again. <laughs> Speaking of What drinking, happened? Well, what, here or somewhere else? Well, I saw this thing on the news, which I DM'd it, I think, to both you guys, where it wasn't, it, they were clowning the fact that Harris County didn't shut down their bars but it was like Brazoria, all these other mm-hmm. little counties that did they close. Did. Oh, no and shit. And it was funny because all in the comments were like, well, I guess Harris County just doesn't have COVID. It's only these other counties that do. So that's oh, why they had to shut down their, their um, what do you call it? Their bars. Mm-hmm. But Harris County didn't shut down, which Harris County is so huge. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So they didn't shut it down there. But I, I don't know. I didn't read the whole full story as to why. Uh, Chingo knows. Y'all know. I like craft beer. Like, I like beers. You know, Love Eighth Wonder and all these people around here, which are all struggling very hard here in Houston, mm-hmm. even though they're still kind of semi-open. Mm-hmm. But Flying Saucer in Addison closed down after 20 years. Oh, gosh. And I'm just like, what? Addison, Texas? Gosh. The Addison, yeah, in, da- in Dallas. Okay. Um, their Flying Saucer <laughs> shut down. That uh, must have been a hard little. Yeah, the, the New Year's Eve, I think, is their last, like, they're calling it the last call. Like, 
then they're closing down like jesus christ oh my gosh again and it's not just oh you want bars open it's like you got the servers and the workers and the people that manage it and all the corporate staff for that store and it's just like when that's why i said if you don't own a business like i feel like we no longer provide work for our comedians right i'm not saying they only depended on us because we weren't but and all the wait uh, staff at the improv of course but you know that, yeah trickles so down. Bartender. I, I, I hate when people are like y'all are selfish you guys don't understand yeah. you if, if you are not self-employed or have have never been self-employed and if and if you're somebody that works for somebody else Imagine if that business had to shut down. Now you no longer have work. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing when you're self-employed is you're providing work for someone else. And when you can no longer provide work for them, it it's a it's a hard hit. You know what I'm saying? So I hate when people are like making little stupid ass comments like quit worrying about your money. We need to worry about Americans catching COVID. Um, I follow one of the housewives of New Jersey and they own this like venue. It's a brown. It's called the Brownstone. And so they were struggling. They were having to shut down because they can't have events. And so someone said, unfollow. How dare you? She go, And she went back at it. She goes, go ahead and unfollow me. She goes, because you don't understand what it's like to not be able to ha- um, uh, give work to 30 employees. And she started going down all her staff, my cooks, my, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. All this and that. And she's like, so unfollow me now. Yeah. It was like, oh, my God, that was the best comeback yeah. because you don't get it. It has nothing to do with being selfish. Yeah. People you know are being what I'm resourceful, like the chef that uh, Chingo mentioned earlier. Who was it, Andrew? Andrew Gruel. Mm-hmm. He's he's become very resourceful with helping other restaurants and Barstool. Do you follow Barstool? A little bit. That's They're doing where the I Barstool saw. Fund. Um, you sent me something from Barstool. Probably, yeah. yeah. They're doing a like Dave Portnoy, the you know president of Barstool is doing a whole like hashtag Barstool Fund where they're funding like local, not just local in New York, but all over like. People are submitting their stories and their videos of like why they can't make their ends meet. And then they do a FaceTime where they record it and post it on the website and the, and the website where it's just like these people just breaking down like dry cleaners, pizza stores, pizza shops or whatever. And they're just like, dude. And once they're in the fund, they're going to continue to be funded by people, patrons basically, that are funding the donations through a bar stool. And it's just like people are losing their minds with gratitude for helping them out. I'd love to. Uh, I, th- I wish that... Um we could find a way to do that yeah um like on a patreon where we sell tickets to people and hey this comedian is performing live on october 1st mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying log in at this time and watch it and if you're a fan of that person you pay now this comedian gets paid you know what i'm saying yeah but it's not like it's not like something you post on facebook because at, at the end of the day it's their job mm-hmm. so they still need to make their money not tips not donations it's like we're selling we're selling tickets to this guy's show for Saturday, whatever, whatever. If you're interested, here's how you buy a ticket. And when you get the ticket, you get a link. You know what I'm saying? And then you watch. And mm-hmm. then maybe next week it's another comedian. You know what I'm saying? It's like I've been thinking about that like so much lately. And I was like, how can we make it work? Because <clears throat> when you're an artist, I feel like it's the way you stay creative and the way that you express yourself. And I think a lot of the comedians, that's how they express themselves. And yeah. you're taking that away from them because a lot of them have had to go find real, uh, I don't want to say real jobs, but because be a comedian, yeah, traditional, you know, job. traditional jobs. And so now they're having to go find those kind of, I can't imagine they're actually happy. Yeah. And it's taken away from their craft. Yeah. I can't imagine. Well, I know somebody's listening right now saying, fuck your craft. <laughs> yeah, um, for sure. Um, whether they see it as a real job or not. And, and the point I'm trying to get to is this debate of they need to open up. Why does Walmart get to be open? And this isn't fair. And what about these people, people's livelihoods? What about suicide rate? Some people, it goes in one ear, not the other, because this is just another thing that has us in a debate divided with bullshit science. And at the end of the day, what it, a, a way to reframe all of this instead of, because ain't none of us scientists, right? right? We can go back and forth with a, with a liberal, who, Democrat, whoever, Biden supporter, and they might be uh, giving their arguments like, well, Marisol, sorry, but Mr. Comedian XYZ just can't tell his little jokes for a few months because we can't kill grandma, right? So they're going to have these good uh, arguments as well. A way to reframe it all is this. We're at the mercy of human beings who make these rules and they're imperfect. So whether it's your county judge or your governor, they're humans. 
the scientists are humans. They make mistakes all the time. And at the end of the day, I, I think I think the argument is a good one of like, hey, let's not lose. Like, let's not transform the entire world over this bug. I know that some people would argue like, well, some of these changes were going to happen anyway, and we were going to head towards UBI anyway, and socialism is just a thing, and and all this stuff. But it's like, reframe it like, can you entertain for a minute that there is some merit in what we're saying? It, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's not a stretch of the imagination to say, hey, man, we're human, and we still kind of need some social interaction, and we still need to be able to make a living and provide and work so we're not just more government, more socialism, more handouts. I, I'm waiting on my check. I'm waiting on my check. I'm waiting on my check. Mm -hmm. And that's where I stand. Um, I know Corona's real. Don't call me a QAnon. Uh, what is it? Like a anti-vaxxer Corona denier. That's not what we're saying. We do love the elderly and people that are vulnerable and we should protect them at all costs. But we also have to factor in Mental health, like you were saying, what are the long term repercussions of these shutdowns? Who's coming up with these shutdowns? How are they how are they coming up with these rules? Like, is it just, well, I'm I'm a Democrat governor and I gotta look at what the other Democrat governors are doing? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh it's kind of a, a sad note <laughs> to end on. Uh we're past the two hour mark and um man, we can't wait to do this again in a couple days for the New Year's edition. It's going to be episode 15 coming up. Uh, if you haven't become a patron, you can still get a snippet of it, like a trailer. If you subscribe to CBTV on YouTube, please pass out the little nuggets and the little half the mile, the little clips, because uh, that's the only way we're going to grow it. And uh, shout out to uh, Gabriel and Octavio and the fellas I met last night. They say they share the clips all the time. Um, you know, it's growing. I think we're going to reach a tipping point where it's inevitable that people like Mighty Soul's mom is spreading the Spanish clips around where yeah. people are like, oh, I didn't know El Senor Biden was doing all this sexual harassment and all this stuff. It's going to come to a, a critical mass. It's going to hit. We don't have to red pill everybody. It's like when you look out a window in Boston and you see this mound of snow. The reason it's not melting is because there's still too much snow keeping it cold even if the sun is out it's not all gonna melt because it hasn't hit that critical mass but there's that tipping point where it's like you red pill just enough people to where it's no longer just shut the fuck up take your l i'm gonna unfollow you and just go to a real comedian who doesn't involve politics it's like no they do too it's just they're telling you what the fuck you want to hear mm -hmm. we're just trying to keep it real and try to fight the good fight um 2021 we will be hitting some cities uh we do expect to see you there because some places are still kind of open pay attention to which states are open which ones are not pay attention to which politicians want to just lock you down more and more and more and don't want you to work and, and they want you to austin press. college station area that's chingo's first gig january 14th and the 15th so if you're in college station, college guys, station texas we coming. I don't know um, what the name of this tour is going to be. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know either. Um, but um, we'll have here. the link up. Um, <laughs> the red pill. Tomorrow morning. Um, oh, okay, take a link. We'll take a link. will be up. And then um, a flyer will be posted soon. So. Dope. And uh, my podcast will start up again, thankfully, in January. It's called Red Pill Eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> all right y'all thank y'all for tuning in uh once again shout out to uh producer rob for making it all happen putting it all together shout out my lovely co-host and my vieja marisol <laughs> follow her at it's marisol Rivera. and uh and thanks to you guys for tuning in and keeping an open mind thank you Sass. later